Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official... Miss Jamaica, what's going on? No, no, you know, Madele, well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Take this moment to go and like, subscribe, and follow us on all social media platforms. And I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it. We're on it. Just Google us. Boss Talk Podcast 101. I will pop up first in line. Don't forget it. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit notifications so you don't miss out on any of this fire interview we're giving. None of these episodes needs to be missed. But we do also have exclusive content and the only way you can see this exclusive content is going, on, going ahead and joining our membership. How you do so is under each and every video, just like this one under here in the description section, there's a link that says join our membership. Do that because y'all see us on the street all the time and be like, man, I love what y'all doing, keep it up. How can we support the brand? This is how you can support the brand. Buy our membership. Thank you in advance. Yo, 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 yo. Hey, man, we got a special guest in there today. He don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here, man, you can't even miss it, man. Uh, if you was watching Hammer back in the day, if you've been watching for this, it's a hell of a documentary going on right now on uh, Tubi. Y'all got to go watch it on a whole bunch of platforms. We about to get into it, man. This guy right here also can sing his butt off. This guy right here... Knows the game. I'm gonna see if I can pull one over on him right quick. Benito is in the building. <laughs> what's up? What's Benito up? is in the building. Yo, 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 CEO. What's what cracking, the hell, baby? Benito? When I first heard your name, I was like, Benito. Uh, it's a that's a Spanish thing, yeah, man. Like, uh, is I'm that like, your that's real Benito, name? nigga. Is that your real name? Benito is my biological name. Uh, my daddy name is Benny, so he named me Benito. Yeah, after him. How so. you must have gotten teased so much as a kid growing I, up. Kids ain't know nothing about no damn Benito. Kid, I hated my name because Benito Burrito, Benito Sanachino, you know, the Doritos, all kind of, you know, I used to get into it, you know, not fights all the time, but yeah, you used to get into it all the time. And when you ran into anybody who was Hispanic and you told them your name, what was their response? They're like, you, 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 your, your name was Benny, but Benito? I'm like, yeah, yeah, little, pretty little boy, I like, uh, whatever, handsome. Whatever, yeah. That's what that's the meaning of it. Beautiful, yes. yeah. Wow. And in, in Spanish, it means. Uh, ain't it beautiful? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. But beautiful. Ain't bonito. That, bonito. Bonito. Ain't bonito. Ain't that, bonito. Ain't that, bonito. Ain't that, ain't that Linda? Oh, okay. Hufe. Linda is, is is also a word that that translates to something. Mm -hmm. I don't know about. I'm I don't know about yeah. that. I know about Benito. I, yeah. I experienced it though personally when we was over in Italy back in the day. So when they said my name, Benito, the whole crowd said. Uh -uh. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Got you one. Got me one. Benito. <sighs> so is that when you started loving your name? Well, I loved it before then. You know what I'm saying? What, I, made, I, you, what made you love your name? Um, the attention I would get, you know what I'm saying, in, in high school, I was different. They're like, you black? They're like, yeah. Uh, if I said my name and I talked a lot of times, they'll be like, uh, we don't know what he is, but he sound cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Benito, we about yes, to sir. get into your whole history and background, man. Yes. I want to tell you, man, uh, thank you for coming on the show, man. No, uh, pleasure uh, being man, here, Man, listen, man, when, when, when I got the call that, uh, you know, I needed to rock out with you for my boy Lamar Lubin, shout out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I said, I got to talk to him. DRS. And, and it's going down, man. Yeah. And that nigga say, I, I sang that nigga too. This is for my home. Nigga, don't make me come like get him, you. you. This is for the homies. Well, what, nigga? I'll get you, nigga. Don't you make gotta me do get it deep you. down like he I does. I can go get it. Let me hear it. I ain't going there right now. <laughs> man, but that nigga show sure did it on here, didn't he? Yes, he did. I'm gonna have Benito to give me something. I want to see if he really was with Hammer. What one of the signature moves you had to make with Hammer? Oh, man. It, one, of the, one of the signature moves on one of them songs. Which one was it? The little typewriter dance or whatever. How did it go? We, I can't do it right here. No, no. The, the, the song. the song. You had vocals, too. You had the... Oh, one, this is the way we roll. You know what I'm saying? I, I, what, you, what did you say? This is the way we roll, we roll. This is the, this the way we roll. Man, hold up. He here, y'all. You know what I'm saying? nigga, we might start back up. I don't know yet. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Man. Let's get to it, baby. So, okay. Yes. Born and raised? I was born in Monroe, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I was raised in a little bitty town called Pleasant Hill. How far uh, was Louisiana. that from? How far is that from Monroe? About, maybe about 40 miles. Okay. It's in between Farmerville and Spearsville, Louisiana. 
And then when uh, my mother got a job in, in town, Eldred, Arkansas, it's only like 16 miles away. When I turned five, my mother moved to Arkansas, so I moved with my mom. And so, uh, but where was your dad? Your dad, was he in um, Louisiana with your mom when you were growing up? No, they weren't together. They weren't together yeah. at all? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, no. Was it a one night stand? No, 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 no. There was girlfriend and boyfriend. My mother okay. was very, very popular. My dad was a quarterback. Ooh. All that good stuff in high school. Bernie's high. You know, since Spears were high school, both of those schools, they all combined later. But um, I come from an athletic background, mother mm -hmm. and, and daddy's side. And, um, you know, he, he was the typical male at the time. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of women, including my mama. But uh, you Were you his first child? I was his second. Second? Yeah, I okay. was his second. How old, how much younger are you from your older sibling? Um, he is, I think, a year older than me. Oh, so he did back to back? Yeah, he's a year older than me. Okay. His name is Jimmy. He's still out here. He's still out here in Dallas. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah. was your dad in, um, influential in your life? Was he a part of your life or you just was all with mom? It was all mama, grandma, aunties, all the uncles and stuff. My, my dad, I really didn't get around him until I was like 12. You know, I always knew who he was, but I never did hang out and kick it with him until I was around about 12 years old. And mama like broke the ice. Like, you want to go there and chill with him? And went by one day and kicked it with him and. It was cool, you know, just an experience. Did you want it to stay? Not really, but I did because, you know, I got four sisters. Okay. You, know? you wanted yeah. to be around a man. Yeah, I wanted to be around them, the family, to yeah. see how things was. But I, I can't say about his wife. They still together now. They've been married about 50 years. Wow. His wife took me in just like I was one of her kids. That's dope. I mean, Mr. my mama Nell, she, she's so beautiful. That's, That's good. That's a beautiful, beautiful woman, yes. That's good. She loved me like I was hers. So, but before 12, were you mad? At the fact that he wasn't around? Because, you know, some kids, especially boys, be like, you know, where my daddy? Why my daddy not here? No, no, no. Did I, you have a male in your life? Yes, my mom was married. Oh, so she, she was I mean, married. You okay. had a stepdad. My stepdad raised me, you okay. know, basically. And my stepdad was real cool, you know what I'm saying? No problems. I, I was the first one, and then, you know, four or five years later, my sister came. Okay. So, yeah, I was I was the only one in the house for, for a minute, you know. So you surrounded by all these girls, because you say your daddy had girls, Mm -hmm. And then your mama ended up having another girl. So you the total, only boy? I have a total of six sisters. And no boys. You the only one. Well, me and my other brother did. Yeah, the older one. I barely know. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. But he never lived with his daddy. Uh-uh. Stayed with oh, his mom. Okay. His mom raised him out here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. My dad was back crazy. there in Louisiana, Bernice, Louisiana. So your daddy was athletic, your mom athletic. But where did you get your vocals from? My grandmother and my mom. Oh, so your mom used to sing? Yes. My in church? Used to sing. Yes. Grandma was wood flow, stomping, hand clapping. You know, a majority of the people from the South, you're going to be somewhat church orientated, mm. some way, form or fashion. I don't care what you do. Okay, give me that song that your mama used to sing, and you sang it now because you always remember her singing it when you were little, when she was in the house, nigga. I got one, nigga. Mine was, uh, 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 what, let me think of what she, mine was Trouble in My Way. That's one of your them. Your mama or your grandma? My mama. She was saying, and she taught it to us. Uh, it, you know, mama teach you a song. Mm -hmm. When she can sing, mm -hmm. she'll teach you a song. And so mama taught me that one, but she say, uh, uh, she talk about uh, uh, that one. If you see my child somewhere, tell him I'm waiting here and now, because I'm waiting for my child to come home. Like mm -hmm. it's a certain song that I know my mama song. What was that song your mama song? If Jesus can't fix it, Nobody can. If Jesus can't fix it, nobody can. Oh, let me stop. Man, man. boy, listen, y'all don't know. <laughs> this boss talk, that's why this show be hard, man. I'm going to make it get there. It got to get there, you know. We got to get some Jesus up in here. We got to get some... All of the stories that w went on in your life, your testimony is what that is. And that's what Boss Talk is about. And that song is so true. If Jesus can't fix it, nobody, nobody. can. We had one. I had one like that, too. We had one uh, that uh, you won't leave here like you came in I, Jesus' I, name. I, I love that You know song. you hear me saying that right that was, now. That's a simple oh, yeah. song because they repeat it over and over, over, and over again. again. <laughs> that's all you say. Repetitive you won't hook. leave yeah. here like you came in Jesus' name. Bound or depressed, sick or lame. Uh -uh. Yeah, that's it. See, see, uh, see, hey, I'm just yeah. telling you. That's it. That's it. You won't leave here like you came. In yeah. Jesus' name. You, you got to have a song. The yeah. song is what really 
makes you understand. And that's the only thing I think that connects you, you know, directly to God when it's just you and him. Yeah. Rather, other than prayer, it's that song. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And can't nobody get in your personal space and business when you're mm -hmm. dealing with God. Mm -hmm. right. Man, come on, man. Y'all, let's talk, man. Okay, so <laughs> you, were, you live with your um, dad. At, you went and he said, stayed with him. But at one point, at some point, you went back and started living with your mom. No, I just stayed with him for a couple of hours. Oh, a couple of hours? You never yeah, did live, live no with day, <laughs> No days or nothing. No like months, I went, no nothing. I went by there one day, mother's was like, you want to spend the day with your dad? i like, I don't know him. You know what I'm saying? But it's cool. Let's go. You know, I was 12 years old. I remember it like it was yesterday. I got there. I was kind of, you know, standoffish for a little while until my sister came out and started, you know, telling me to open up and, you know, it's okay. You cool. And... I stayed to that evening. Mama came and got me that evening. She said, you have fun, son? I said, it's all right, mama. It's okay. And you just never, you, you never went back into no, any I of that? No, I never went back. Wow. But we still cool to this day, though. All my sisters, they love me. I'm their big brother. You mm -hmm. know, they love me. And uh, as well as my two biological sisters. Yeah. You know. So you, your mama is, that's your baby right there. Yeah. Unfortunately, my mother passed seven years ago. Wow. So we coming up on the eighth year this summer, mm -hmm. June 26th. You know, so... I was just thinking you know, about that. You never today. forget them dates. Well, what you I just, just, you know, I just I know. thought about that today. Mine was in February, man, nineteen ninety six. Yeah, yeah See, it was an unbelievable day. My boy. daddy February. passed away today. Today's date, May fifteenth. Wow. Not today. Oh, he didn't oh. pass away today. Today. Well, you said he passed no. away today. I'm like, Not we, today, and we today, doing ball talk. We doing ball talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, why she get down? Was, yeah, he was no, he, that was no. a while back, about eight yeah, years ago, eight or nine years ago. We together, boy. Made sure that I <laughs> my mind <laughs> not this time. Okay, man, hey. Cardi Cobb, Car Cortez, whatever. Man, was that. I just anyway. you know, I really like like I understand, man, that with, through this documentary, I understood you seen and and, and and went through a lot with the whole movement. Mm -hmm. I want to take it all the way back to when you first was singing, and and you know, and MC Hammer, and you first linked up for our listeners. Yes. So, like, run us down through there how it was. Just give me the whole story, the whole spiel on how you guys really came to link up. I'm going to go real fast. <laughs> <laughs> I got time. You got go time. ahead. I was uh, 18 going on 19. I was playing football. As you look at my football player. Yeah, look good. And uh, I got highly nigga. recruited. What you play? What position? Play linebacker. Ooh, that nigga on the line like yeah. this. Yeah. You don't want to see that nigga, yeah. man. And they're like, Singleton, nigga. I was damn near a rover back, so I had to. Control that whole field, yeah. I'm watching everything. So I was in school, had a full scholarship, U UCA, Arkansas, Conway. When I went up there, that was the year that Scotty Pippen was coming out, got drafted, played with Chicago, with uh, Michael, uh, uh, Jordan Michael Jordan for the Bulls. So on the, on the campus, they was like, he the man, he the man, the man. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. So I'm highly recruited. Go in, man, go in the first semester. Coach come to me, Benito called me and I said, hey, hey, uh, we trying to get this tight end out of, out of Texas, man. Big boy out of Texas, and uh, we want to cut your scholarship in half mm. and put you on work study. And um, we come back next season, we'll put it, we'll pull your scholarship back up. I'm like, man, I could have went anywhere. I could have went to Arizona State, the, the Red Devils. I could have went to uh, Notre Dame. Full uh, ride. Yeah, full rise. You know what I'm saying? I could have went to uh, other colleges that wanted me, but I chose to stay at home. You lied to me and my mom, my, my whole family. I dedicated my life to doing this. Man, forget this, I'm gone. You can keep that scholarship. I, I'll go somewhere else to play. So I went back home. It was like two months, the season was about over anyway. And uh, my best friend at the time, uh, Hammer's cousin, Jimmy Burrell, he was like, man, Hammer my cousin. I'm like, who, Hammer who? You know? He's like, MC Hammer, the one, I said, want to be on the video dancing? He's like, yeah, yeah, that's my best cousin. Hey, nigga, you don't quit laughing. <laughs> that's your damn cousin. And this is the first time you hearing this. Yeah, yeah, you know, you from the you country. You that nigga was tripping. Yeah, you know, we from, we from Colorado, Arkansas. So it's like, okay. So he goes home, his daddy was a DJ. So he pulled all, all the album covers and was on the back and said, man, look, it says it to and dedicate to the entire Burrell family. I'm a Burrell. I said, just because your name Burrell don't mean you his cousin. <laughs> I know that's right. Man, man, you lying. Anyway, he had a number on there. He called a number and got the office in, in uh, Oakland called Busted Records mm -hmm. and talked to, uh, one day he got the phone call and it was Hammer's brother, Chris, Chris Burrell. He's talking to him, he's telling him who he was and he said, he said, man, we might be cousins, where you from? He said, yeah, my people, everything, is, my people from down in Bastrop, Louisiana, because that's where Hammer and them from, mm -hmm. Hammer's mom and dad. So he's like, yeah, we might be cousins. He said, well, I tell you what, he said, man, 
We want to be down. I want to be down with, with Hammer. This is my partner, Jimmy. He said, well, tell, I tell you what, do a demo tape or something. We coming to Grandma State University for a homecoming. Y'all come on down and bring your tape, man. I'm, I'm going to lead you to my brother and see what he think about y'all or whatever. So at that time, I was going to go back to school to Grandma and be walk on because Grandma was real. That's when Eddie Robson, man. He was real funny style. He didn't like, you know what I'm saying, if you went from Texas or, or California or Chicago, he really didn't like Arkansas players or whatever. Okay. He was very biased. Wow. I'm going to tell the truth. He was very biased. So I was going to walk on as a linebacker down there with Grambling. So I'm going to school, do my thing, and then homecoming came up. Homecoming go. Just like he said, we got dressed up. We had our, we had our little hammer outfits made up. His mama, my friend Jimmy, mama could sew. Mm -hmm. So she made us some diaper pants and the, the matching tops. Boy, we was, out, we was shining, boy. So we sent him to the student center in Grambling, and them damn two buses came through. <sighs> we looked at it and said, there they go. Right? So the buses stopped right in front of the, the, the lunch hall. They get off. <coughs> First one we see is uh, Hammer's brother, Chris. So me and Jimmy walk over there. Jimmy like, hey, man, you know Chris Burrell? He said, I'm Chris Burrell. He said, for real? Hey, what's up, cuz? He kicked it or whatever. He like, man, where Hammer at? He said, on the bus. He said, can we go on the bus with you? He said, yeah. We stepped him on the bus. Sitting there, Hammer sitting back in the corner, eating some popcorn. You know what I'm saying, just chilling. But he said, what's up? He said, it's your cousin right here, man. It's cousin Jimmy, whatever. This is his partner right here. He said, yeah, because we got a group called MC Burrell and Benito. He like, oh, yeah? He said, yeah. He said, yeah, we got a demo tape. We had the little cassette tape. Hell yeah, that Maxwell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah pass with the Maxwell. Was it, was it, was it, so y'all recorded on that thing? Three songs. We did three did songs. That thing. Play, on play. a little four track record at this little white dude studio back in our hometown. Yeah, he didn't know what he was doing. We did use some old records and he was rapping over and I was singing the hooks. And Hammer's sitting there like, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. He said, check this out. He said, I got an audition tonight around about, uh, after the show is over, he said, y'all come back to uh, Monroe to the Holodome. That's where we have my auditions at. And we're like, okay. I'm thinking to myself, I'm already in my mama's car, so I'm like, man, I don't know if we're going to be able to go to that. But anyway, y'all got tickets to go to the show? We're like, no. Nah. He said, okay, y'all going to go to the show tonight. We just put you down front or whatever. Did the show. The thing was over. They left, went to Monroe. My partner like, man, we got a one in life chance, man. Let's go to Monroe, check it out, see what we can do. I said, all right, man, I hope I don't get in trouble. So we drove on over. Did have, it had about eight, nine people auditioning for Hammer. I was the last one. Mm. And I was scared as all I do is. Because I ain't never done nothing like it before. I sung in talent shows and, you know, it's bullshit and whatever. You know, the simple stuff. So, like, this is the big league. This is MCM. We sent them on a, you know what I'm saying, a, uh, you know what I'm saying, pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it. Damn, you feel it. You know, all that. Oh, is. Yeah. Doo -doo -doo. I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? They put me in the mix. We get in there, man. He said, okay, Benito, your, 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 your turn. Go ahead. I froze. I'm like, damn. What I'm gonna say? What I'm gonna do? I just broke out. Even though I hate to leave, girl, for I cried as I walked out that door. They said, wait a minute, hold on. said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, 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 hold on, wait a minute. He said, hold on a minute. He went to the house phone. Teddy, 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 what you doing? It was Teddy Riley, Teddy Riley guy. Uh, Heavy D, Kumo D, MC Hammer, 357, Ace Juice, and somebody else. They was all on the tour thing together. Teddy, come down. I want you to hear something right quick, homie. You ain't going to believe it. Come down there right quick. And, mm. and tell Aaron to come down, too. Aaron's in the room with a girl, so. Of course. He, Aaron didn't come down. <laughs> so Teddy came down, and I did it again. And uh, Teddy stopped me. He said, stop right there. He said, Hammer, if you don't sign this kid, yo. I'm signing in the new Jack Swing. Him said, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. Hey, Benny Joe, Benny Joe, welcome to Busted Records, baby. I said, huh? Welcome to Busted Records. Shoot my hand and everything. I said, Busted Records, what's that? Is this my record label? We're going to make records, baby. Titty like, oh, man. Okay, cool. He said, yeah. I said, I'm signing your label? I said, I don't believe you, man. I said, you got to call my mama. He said, huh? Exactly. I said, call my mama, man, because she ain't going to believe this. She got to look it over, yeah. too. So we got on the phone and called my mama. He's like, mama, first thing she said, when she was on my uh, on the phone, I said, "Mama, where my goddamn car at?" I said, mm. "Mama, uh, Mama, hold on, I don't need that damn. You so, you, you grinding for two weeks." I said, "Mama, hold on, come on, Mama." That's give any me Mama. Me. I don't give a damn, boy. Bring my car here right. You ain't here thirty minutes. I'll tell you. Oh my God! I said, "Mama, I'm coming. Hold on, I want somebody to speak to you, Mama, right quick." His name is Sam. MC who? A who fay? I said, "Mama, hold on, speak to him, Mama." How you doing, Mrs. Gloss? My name ain't Gloss. My last name is Scott. Oh, Miss Scott. Hi, I'm MC Hammer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want, I want to sign your son to my record label. Is it cool for him to come with me and be on the road? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get, go on and do something with him because he in school down. I don't know what he's going to do, whatever the life on the. It's okay. So can you pack his bags and have him back ready? Be back here at 6 o'clock in the morning to go on the road with me? Go on the road with you? What, what, what you doing? And then I guess it started clicking in. Uh -huh. Say so he going on tour with me. I'm taking him on tour. I'm going to make your son a star. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I have, get, just get my car home. I'll bring him back. So Hammer's best friend, Craig Brooks, stepped in. God rest his soul in peace. He died last year wow. of COVID. Mm. Um, Craig was like, no, no. But that was Hammer's right-hand man. That was his uh, road manager. He said, no, 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 bro, we got no room in the bus, man. We can't take him on the road with us right now. Mm. <clears throat> he like, man, what? So I'm like instantly deflated. Right. Oh, it's over. It ain't nothing going to happen. So he's like, cool. And everything happened, man, like I guess God's plan. Am I talking too much? No, no keep no, going. Man. So me and my partner, Jimmy, was there. He's like, man, don't worry about it. We're going to get it. So I'm like, hey, man, he's taking out my numbers and everything. He's all my information, Benito. Give me about two more months. You know what I'm saying? The tour will be over. I'll be back in Oakland. And uh, I'm going to bring you to California, man. Put your studio. I'm going to do records on you, bro. Don't even worry. I got you. I'm telling you, but my word is bun. I'm like, okay. I'm talking like Hammer not too. <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me the numbers and everything. I called him one time just to check. Didn't get no answer. I said, oh, he ain't answered the phone. Okay. Anyway, so my partner, Jimmy, Hammer's cousin, come with a brilliant idea. Look, this is what we're going to do. Since we MC Burrell and Benito, we're a group. We're going to go to California. And, and see, because they back out to talk to Chris the other day. They just got back out to it. They back. So how long after you went back home till you decided to get up and go? How long of a time about was two, it? About two, two and a half months. Two and a half months. Because see, Gremlin's homecoming was running in November, I think. It was October, November. You know, they didn't change it around now, though. Mm -hmm. But so we had two more year, two more months before the year was over. Okay. So in January okay. of 1990, I got with him in 89, but I really got with him in 90. Mm-hmm. First of January, my partner said, we gonna ride this bus to Cali. He's gonna tell us yay or nay or send us back to Arkansas. Let's take our chances. I like your buddy. Huh? <laughs> I like your buddy. Man, I swear for God, I, I, I say, okay, Jimmy, what's up? He said, how much money you got? I said, I don't know, probably about $200. He said, try to get 500. I'm gonna have 500. And then we took two of our partners with us. What did your mama dancers. say about all this? Your mama let you go? He grew. Yeah, she, I mean, she was like, you gonna stay in school or what? I said, mama, I wanna pursue this because if I, if I play football, I may take a chance of getting hurt. I might get hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because I see a lot of people's knees get messed up, especially linebackers because some linemen and whatever, they come for your knees every time. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to protect your legs. So I didn't, didn't want to doubt that I was good. I said, either I'm going to be a professional football player, mama, or I'm going to make it in this music. She said, okay. That's what you want to do. So all our parents took us to the bus station. We got another bus man drove to Cali. This is how good God is on my life. So it was a day and a half ride, two days, got to Cali. That morning, I got to L.A. by 6.30 in the morning. My cousin picked me up. Me and my other partner, partner was dancing with me. Went with me to my cousin's house in uh, 109th Lamoli over there in Inglewood. Oh, right, behind, right behind Morningside. <laughs> in the hood. Jimmy and uh, other partner, Ronnie, they went on up to Oakland to his uncle's house. They said as soon as how quick it happened now. The same day, when they got off the bus, Everybody at the bus station had a big old commotion going on out there. They like, what's going on with him? Like, yeah. He said, MC Hammer shooting this video down the street. I said, MC Hammer? He said, man, that's, been, that's who we're looking for. They got off the bus and go down the street, down to where they was. Hammer shooting. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Uh -huh. uh -oh, uh -oh. Here comes well, the hammer. Biggest uh -uh, sounds. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Killing it. He was doing it, right? He said, walked up. He said, cuz, what's up? He said, Hammer turned and looked at him. Oh, what's up, Jimmy? My partner that was with him, the dancer, told me, he said, man, you should saw the look on Jimmy's face. I said, what you mean? He said, the next word coming out of hammer my mouth is, what Benito at? Damn. He said, Jimmy look crazy, like, oh, he in LA? Call him, here, take my phone and call him. The old, old school banana yeah, that, phone. Yeah, the brick phone. The brick, the banana. You left an impression on that man. Yeah, yeah, he said, what Benito at? Hammer called me, he said, yo, let's speak to Benito. My partner answered the phone, he said, man, somebody wanna speak to you, Benito. I said, okay, what's up? Hey, what's up, Benito, this hammer? I said, huh? Who? He said, hey, MC Hammer, man, who you think it is? I said, Hammer, what's up, baby? What's cracking? What's up? You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, yeah. He said, Benito, where you at? I said, I'm in LA. He said, hey, check it out, man. I'm coming to the senior hall show in two weeks. Don't get in no trouble. Stay cool, stay where you at. Don't, man, please don't get in no trouble, man. I'm coming down. I'm gonna get you, take you back, bring you back up to Oakland, put you in the apartment, get you in the studio. Babe, we gonna, hey, we gonna make history, baby. I like, okay. Okay, cool. So I say, okay, two weeks? He said, yeah. He said, matter of fact, what you doing this weekend? I said, nothing. We just sent each other. I said, can you come up to Oakland? I said, I don't know. Hold on a minute. I said, cuz, can we go to Oakland? He said, yeah. What's up? He said, coming up to Oakland, Benito. He said, um, 
I'm gonna give you per diem and everything, put you and your cousin in, in a hotel. I said, who? What'd you say? He don't even know what per diem is. I said, what's per diem? <laughs> he said, man, it's money you get, you know what I'm saying? When you, don't worry about it, I got you, I got you. <laughs> That's my first time ever here per diem. Yeah. Right. I know what it was. So we went up to Oakland, we got there, just like Hammer said, met with the manager, whatever, he put us in the hotel, we came to the set, and that's when we did, that's when we're doing, that's why we pray. Mm. Wow. That, that video. You, pray, you, that's how we, we pray. pray. If you look you at the video. You make it today. I remember yeah. dancing to that when you I was younger. You look at younger. that, you'll see me and uh, Hammer's cousin, Jimmy, my best friend, partner at the time, we going in the alley, and we finna fight. I got a gang, he got a gang, and Hammer stepping between us and push us apart. He stepping between us, keep us from fighting. We face off. You know, I got a hot top fade back then. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was still cocked. This you look at that. That boy's a linebacker. <laughs> anyway, um, we also did. Um, we, they were shooting the, the move for uh, Reverend Pressure and all that stuff in the church, and uh, doing another scene. So later on in the day, uh, we sit on the steps, and now that the film man was out there filming, and that's when I signed the part about uh, Ham. I want to thank you for being in your crew, and thank you for putting me in the, in the crew or whatever. And uh, Ham was like, Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he said, took a break. And I said, hey, everybody, whole posse, come on in. Everybody come on around, y'all. I'm gonna let y'all our newest member to the, to the posse, baby. And they're like, okay, cool. I'm looking around like, who the new member? I, I was real, real, Didn't even real know. humble and modest, man, because country, don't know better. You know what I'm saying? Didn't know better. Okay. Okay. So, okay, let me get it right. Anyway, there you go. I, um, it get out there, and uh, Harris said, yo, everybody, I'm gonna let y'all know a new singer, baby, and this boy is cold blooded. He from Arkansas. His name is Benito. Posse, welcome Benito to the posse. They like, uh, okay, hey, clapping and stuff. I'm like, yeah, okay, whoa, whoa. Some of them looking sour. Yeah, yeah. there's some haters in the group. Yeah, yeah, he's looking me sour. You know, like, who is that? Yeah, oh, damn, you done found another damn artist. Because mm -hmm. he already had like More eight, nine, ten artists already. So I was happy as hell. And uh, my partner Jim said, oh, hold up, wait a minute. You know, you saying about me, cuz? What's up? He said, cuz, I'm going to tell you now, man. I, I got enough rappers, man. So, you know what I'm saying, I, I'm signing Benito as, as a singer. So I'm to the label, he's gonna be a singer for me. And um, you know, I, I'll get your job working in the studio or something like that. He said, no nah, man, we're a crew, man, we're, we, we crew, and we're together, man, we came in together, man. You just gonna, you ask me out, cuz? He said, man, I'm telling you, I'm signing Benito. So, this, it sounded so damn fast, it was kinda, kinda tricky. Uh, Craig came behind me, tapped me on the shoulder, said, huh? He said, you, you and your cousin, tell me right quick. So, while Hammer and him was talking, he took us off, and took us in his room, and, and uh, set a paper in front of me to sign on. I didn't know what the hell I was signing. I was just happy to sign it. I you didn't, didn't read, read it? I didn't read nothing real quick. I looked, I said, what's this right here? He said, Wait a minute, wait a minute. You just took the paper when he gave it to you. You damn right. You never looked at anything didn't on it. Didn't look at nothing on it. Did you ask any questions? Yeah, yeah, I asked him. What said, did you this? ask? He says, you signed it to the label. He said, this ain't the actual, actual contract. We're gonna get a big contract later. This right now is just saying that you signed it on to bust the records and you're gonna be a new artist. And you okay. didn't even say for how much? I didn't ask no questions. Just happy to have the Just opportunity. Just happy to be a country nigga to be from Arkansas to be with Emma. Mm -hmm. So I took the paper and I signed it. So Craig's like, okay, cool then. Okay, we got everything we need now. When you come back, we're going to give you the big contract. Had a big contract ready for you to sign. So, you know, you can get your lawyer to look at it and all that kind of stuff. So I said, okay. Because I said, this is a consignment thing. It's not like a signing bonus. You sign on. I ain't get no money right then, but it's cool. So I said, cool. My partner was on fire. He was hot. He was there looking at it. Huh? He was looking no, at he didn't see me do the contract. No, he's so like, he knew you had been pulled to the side. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he wanted off. to be signed too. Yeah, he was arguing with Hammer about right. why he ain't. Because that's group. his cousin. Yeah, why you not got me in the group? He said, man, don't worry about it. So Hammer said, you know what? I'm going to put you in the group 357. I'll put you in the group. It was one day they, they have new dancers coming up. I'll put you in as a dancer. So he did. So that's how it happened, man. Did he? you and him see each other uh, all the time still? No, no, no. He stays in Atlanta now. No, I'm talking about no, when, during then. that time. Back then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he, he was in the crew. Did, could you tell that it was different oh, yeah, way he, was, he looked I, at you? Let me tell you what's crazy, though. Check this out. So two weeks later, clockwork. Hammer came to L.A. Meet me at the Sophie Hotel in Beverly Hills. Tomorrow morning about 7, 30, 8 o'clock. Be ready to roll. Be dressed, though, but you know, because... Uh, we, we're going to see your hall show. I didn't know the, the show was like minute, that. Wait a minute. That's when y'all was up there in the black? Uh, and he had the white on? No, not that time. No. But was you with him that day? I was with him, but I wasn't in the crew dancing and singing and doing all that Okay, yet. I remember this, that one. I initially got with him. Okay. So he's like, I'm on there. And uh, uh, we got, came to the hotel, went over to the show. And we finished there like at 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. I said, damn. This be coming on at night time, so I thought it'd be coming on at night. Y'all filming today? It ain't live. It ain't, yeah, yeah, it ain't live. They, they filmed because they had to, you know, something wrong, they were bleeping or cut it. Right. I didn't know that. And they said, TV, I always remember this, Benito. TV is always on time. Mm -hmm. 
I don't give a damn what you're doing. If you miss your time on TV, they will go to commercial or something else because it, it, it's, it's set up that way. Mm-hmm. You can't be late. So always be ahead of time. Whatever you do, be there an hour at least ahead and of that's time. That's what the hammer Yeah, always be punctual because business is business. Cool. We get on there. I said, Hammer. I said, man, everybody back home don't believe I'm with you, man. And uh, don't believe me and Jimmy. Jimmy came down with Hammer. Came down from Oakland with them. He said, he said, okay. I said, you know, we Elroy Arkansas, they ain't, they ain't believe us, man. He said, I got something for you. I said, what's up? He said, I'm going to go in the audience, sit down front with, with his brother, Louis Burrell. Sit beside Louis. I'm going to come out to the audience and grab your hand and pull y'all up. And I'm going I'm to I'm dance in front of y'all for a second. The camera going to pan and hit me for at least 15, 20 seconds. And y'all just do a smile and look at the camera, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Doing your hands. That way they're going to see you with me then. They're going to know you with me so they ain't no, no problems. I said, okay. I said, what time is that? Hey, he said, 11 o'clock tonight, like, you know, back home. They told everybody. I called my mama. I said, mama, we're going to be on TV tonight. And we're on TV. If we there, you're going to see us, mama. Mama want to call the whole damn town. <laughs> there in my house in my mama's living room. Watch, watch the party. TV. <laughs> mama said when they saw me and Jimmy on TV, they jumped up, ran outside, burning wheels, acting crazy, screaming and hollering. They thought it was a, some man. Man, it was like ecstatic, man. She said the whole t- just lit up. Everybody, t- they ready with him. Yeah, baby, El Dorado. You know, he's going crazy. <laughs> man, I want to hear about uh, you and when when MC Hammer. It's always a story about him and Too Short having a difference. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. having a beef. I, MC Hammer. Uh, I mean, Too Short kind of spoke on it. He he told. He said, "Yeah, we had. We would say little things back and forth. You know." Mm-hmm. Uh, can you recollect a time when they was having differences and you was able to, you know, see what was going on with it? I saw the, I, we had a little standoff one time. Okay, let's talk about East it. Oakland gets East Oakland. East Oakland gets Oakland. Because half of them was always claim uh, East 14. Okay. Bank Boys. I guess it was a gang they had out there or whatever. And they would always mention Felix Mitchell. You know what I'm saying? Lil D was his homeboy. All of them. I, I, I never knew who Lil D was until after I researched them. And um, so we at Summer Jam in uh, Northern California. And... Um, the rumors were already out. The two shorties start the rumors. What had happened was, because I went, I was there with him when we got the key to the city to Oakland. And um, the police department, for some reason, man, uh, Ham was so popular, they bought new vehicles and all that kind of crazy stuff, right? They had a helicopter, had Hammer Time on the belly. They had an operation called Hammer Time. Wow. The paddy wagon had Hammer Time on the side. All of this. So it looked like Hammer had bought all that for them. So, too short and them sort of said, yeah, Hammer bought them helicopters, Hammer bought the police cars, woo woo woo. And it spread like wildfire. That's when the, that's when the town started hating, the, not, well, I re- yeah. Yeah, I, I remember. They started hating on Hammer. Like, they ain't done sold us out. Oh, we, we getting picked up by the police. They started, yeah, Hammer Town, baby. They was even saying Hammer Town when they arrest them. Damn. Man, so, it put a bad stigma on Hammer. So Hammer's like, man, then hit put the record out. Uh, 50 million dancers in the big, big old, old band. band. That ain't me. I'm from yeah. the old school. Yeah, yeah. Drop yeah. play the instrumental, drop the mic, and I'm cool. Look. That's what that nigga said. I didn't even know what it was, but it was like dry snitching or dry hating or whatever. Not dry snitching, dry hating. Hammer's like, yeah, we got to handle that. So like you saw on the clip or whatever you seen, but Lewis called him, say, hey, man, we coming home. We don't need that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of stuff on the streets, and we don't need that street stuff going on. So when we was in Summer Jam, one of the guys come and say, hey man, too short in the next, in the next thing over, come from the bungalow over on the side. Like what? And at that time, the dude named Chris Hicks, you know what I'm saying? From the tales, you know, he had Drew Down. He yeah, had the, he yeah. Had the, he had the loonies. Yeah, yeah. And all them, Yuck Mouth and all them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they over there getting ready, you know, because they had a hot record out. I got five yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing was a big, going. big record. We all in the Summer Jam together. Him said, what? He next door. Okay, cool. Let's go over there. So we went over there. About well, you 15, sound just like him. 15 D. God, you got that nigga down. Open the door. Went in there. Hey, 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 short. Come in and hot you for a minute. 15 D. We was. Y'all like rolled up on it. We had more than that, though, but it was just the one that went over there because the other one didn't know what was going on. So they come out. It's about seven, eight of them. Like, what's up? Short, like, hey, man, we're going we gonna to rectify this right now. He said, I just want to know thing. Why you why you say this shit on record, man? He said, brother, I don't want the brother trying to break those down for us and make things possible for us to grow in this music thing, and you had to hating on me, tearing me down, tell my, what's up with the 50 million dancers in the big old band shit, short? Oh man, it's, it's just entertainment, come on, uh, Hammer, you know how it is, bro, you know what I'm saying? He said, man, he says, there's a lot of funk going on in the town, and it ain't good, man, you, you just squash that shit, tell your boys to chill out with that booty, cause we don't want no wars going on, you know what I'm saying? And then when our people go over there, I don't want nobody trying to mess with my folks. We come to the town either, you know? 
you know, cousin, I mean, you know, you got cousins over there and all that kind of everybody, you know, everybody know even in the streets. So Sharp was he was he was, he he definitely stood his ground to say this who I am. But at the end of the day, it, you, you got yeah. it. But 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 we you know you it's entertainment. Yeah. And then shortly after that, Sharp left the town and moved to Atlanta. So he oh so he left. He didn't leave because of Hammer. I but mean, he just clarify that. <laughs> no no. Phantom <laughs> came on and say he left and stayed down there because he went to the Freak Nick. He yes. never came back. That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> he didn't move back to Cali now. Yeah I know. Yeah. But, but, but at the time, time, like like Short said, he had a lot. It was a the town was crazy. There was a lot going on. Friends of friends was killing friends and people that knew people, different crews, and they was mad cause everybody was cool with everybody cause the town was like that. It reminded me of being back home, but the town was big, but it was small for its community wise. And everybody knew everybody and it, 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 was, it, was, it was ugly, man. And we went home and Hammer didn't want that. He wanted that. We stayed in Fremont anyway. Wow. We stayed like maybe 45 minutes, almost an hour away from Oakland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, so look, look, man white town. you know, you want to say, ask something or because yeah. I'm gonna keep going? Yeah, I was gonna ask. Um, okay, when you were in on tour with Hammer, and I, I remember back in the days when I used to watch MC Hammer, I remember at one point he was wearing like a bulletproof vest. Why was he wearing a bulletproof vest? How you know he had a bulletproof vest on? Because I could see it. You could see it? Yeah. It was bulky. <laughs> it was bulky. Um, that came after uh, one of our members got shot on stage. He was standing right beside me, no lie. And I was, I was thankful to God I didn't get shot. Mm -hmm. We didn't know where the gunshot came from because we had pyros and a bunch of explosions on stage and stuff like that. And then when he hit him, he was like, ah, ah, ah. I was like, you got burnt, Joe? You know what I'm saying? Where did he get shot? In, the, in his calf. Uh, in his leg? Calf, yeah. In his calf. Side of okay. his calf. And it came out the other side. And we were thinking he just got burnt by one of the mm -hmm. pyros. Mm -hmm. But we went back in the, in the dressing room in the back area where we all changed it on stage and put a flashlight on the leg and they could see the hole. And uh, one of the guys, that's a bullet hole. They ain't no. Pyro and looked on the backside and saw the exit wound. Like, man, somebody's shooting. And that's when security went on alert. And, uh, you know, right before that. Wait a minute, when Joe got shot, it was so loud and y'all was performing so. Did nobody hear it? Nobody heard the shot. No, because that, that, that music is loud. Music is like 125 decibels. So when you, when it shot, no pop, no nothing. No, just, it, where did he get hit at? In the in it the pop when it did the, it popped when it did the pyros. It like do 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 because he thought doo, it was doo, a pyro doo. that burnt yeah. him. That yeah. they didn't know it was. We thought it was burned by one of the pyros. Right. And so the explosion went off. You hear the actual gunshot. Somebody was in the office in the audience that shot him. Wow, and just shot him right there. Yeah, he and they didn't shot catch me. nobody. They didn't. No. How far away from him was were you? Right next to him. Like into that mic, that, that mic right there. When you walk back in there and y'all finally figure out that he got shot in the leg, what uh -huh. was your thoughts? What did you think? My heart dropped. I got scared. I said, "Man, that could have been me. Could have shot me on stage." I said, "Oh, shit, it's getting dangerous now." Was this in but, the middle of your performance, or yeah, was it on that stage and, and doing a song? Yeah. No, so meaning like y'all were gonna go back on stage after this? Uh -huh. or oh what? yeah, it wasn't finished. It was just one of them. Excitement moments at the end and one of the songs. Dun, 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 dun. Boom, boom. So did y'all go back on stage? I did. They rushed him off and they told him to uh, don't say you got shot on the stage. Go to the hospital. Say you walking down the street and somebody shot you in the drive-by. But that's not no, even no, no, it. No. I'm thinking about the fact that y'all went back on there not knowing if the person was still out there about oh, yeah. to shoot somebody the show, again. The show had to go on. Hammer was scared. Now, what, yeah. did, what did Hammer say once he found out it was Once he got off, he's like, man, he said, what's going on? All of them came in. They had, you know, the detectives and all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, certain, we got to hide high on security and check everybody coming in, you know, want them down, all that kind of stuff, make sure. And they're going to, see, I'm telling you. No, I'm talking when he when he found when out, he first found that, out. That, that he had gotten shot. Did he even find out or he just Yeah, yeah, back? he did. And he yeah. went back out there anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't yeah. even hesitate. He didn't tell. Now they, they didn't tell Hammer why he was on stage. He okay, okay. Show. He went to the show was over. Then he told him. Okay. They didn't tell him why okay. he was out there. Nah, nah. But you, you knew. But you knew. Yeah, I knew, and some other people knew backstage. And what was you thinking when you went back out there to perform? Hell, I was scared. I was looking around, looking through the audience, like, what the hell? Did you mess up on like any of the steps? No, no, no. See, this is the thing. I wasn't a, a dancer like that. I was Hammer's lead vocalist. Right. I sung a lot of songs, so I just come out and do my parts, and I go back in, go in the back. Okay. And I finished doing it. I stepped on stage throughout the whole song and, you know, run it out and, you know, yeah, do my thing. And then that was it. So when you went back out there, you knew he had, he had gotten shot. Yeah. Uh, how many sets did you do after that? Can you remember? Or did, was it just four or five more songs. So y'all did four or five more songs. <clears throat> and the show was over. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's hard, yeah. man. That's crazy. But see, here's the crazy thing. I'm going to run back. I'm going to run you back. See, like a month or two before that, uh, 
you probably gonna ask me about this later. Khalil Roundtree okay. was a men's manager. I seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got I murdered that. in Chicago. So we're like, dang, what's going on? We cursed to somebody? You know, what's going on? And then two weeks after that happened, he getting shot on stage. We got shot at again mm. in so Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he wasn't wearing a bulletproof vest yet. Yeah, he, he started wearing. He started at that time. Let's yeah. talk about that. That two weeks later, uh, in Al what what happened in Albuquerque, New Mexico? We was playing a softball game against the fire department and the police department. Damn, Hammer did charity stuff like that. We had an off day, so we out there playing softball and baseball. One of Hammer's partners from the bay, one of the bodyguards, said his name Frosty. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He was like, he hadn't met a girl, whatever. She was out there chilling with us, whatever, kicking it. And some dudes came through the whole El Camino, like they're from mm -hmm. LA or somewhere. Tell them gangbangers or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So they're like, hey, come here, Mika. Come here, let me out at you a minute. Uh, boy, you know, you know what women do. I ain't stunning you, man, whatever, but. And they kept saying, hey, hey, B I T C H, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? Boy, you And then Frosty's like, hey, hey, nigga, you know what she said? Hey, go on, hey, keep it moving, partner. You know what I'm saying? Move around. Oh, oh, it's like that, it's like that. So Hammer's had security, Wee Wee. Wee Wee peeped it out. He said, hey man, them niggas gonna come back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They look like they bought that. They're like, what? He said, when we all them, all them sitting behind us, hammering them, they don't know what's going on. So we're close, we close to the street and everything. So they goes down and turn around at the end of the street and come back down. They come back up like right, like on, on the movies. A drive by. But they don't care that y'all playing against firefighters and, and police. And police. And he, they don't even care. They don't even care. Hey, wow. they got halfway down that street and they come out that that, that passenger window over the top of the, the window with that. Yeah, that, 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 that cannon, whatever he had, that, and everybody started running. He started dropping. Doo, 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 doo. They started dropping on the field. We go all running, running around, getting on the ground, trying to hide behind trees. One of our representatives from Pepsi got shot in the arm. Wow. Mm. Right. And uh, Frosty, the guy was yapping at him. He got shot in, the, in his leg, a lower leg. Right. Because they're trying to shoot him. Mm -hmm. But you know, the guy was standing around. And she <clears> didn't get shot. After that, the girl didn't get shot. No. Mm. After that, we was like, oh shit. Whoa, some ugly. So that's when Hammer started wearing the vest. He's like, "Yo, man, somebody, somebody trying to sabotage our tour, or some, some ain't right. We need to fix this." And uh, uh, his brother, like Lewis, like you need to start wearing the vest. He said, "Yeah, what's the use around the vest? Hell, they shoot me in the head. Mm -hmm. Do me like they did uh, Martin Luther. Ain't no mm -hmm. difference." Hammer said, "I ain't scared." He said, "Brother, <laughs> ain't about you being scared. It's about you being safe." Put the vest on. They go, we, go, we got you a nice vest where you really can't tell you got it up in your suits. They refitted the suits. The fitting me said, just see, can you move in and whatever. Hammer still can move. You know, doing his things. Yeah, 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 I can move, man, whatever. It's okay. So we going home to Oakland. The room already out. The town are already ain't like a hammer. We coming home. Because of them police. Yeah, the police and that, 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 that uh, task force, whatever they're doing. So they upset like a mug. So we scared now, like, Hammer said, I ain't gonna let them punk me in my own town. I'm gonna perform. They're gonna kill me. And his brother Lou tried to tell him, don't do it. Let's cancel the show. Let's cancel it. Hammer said, hell no, we doing the show. I ain't, I'm going home. I ain't scared of them. And we did it. We had no problems. Wow. I wanna I wanna ask you about uh Red Man. He always on a lot of interviews talk about MC Hammer step to him because mm -hmm. he had said something about his mother. Yeah. Or something like that. What was that about? Do you remember? That uh, the same thing like that other cat, uh, uh, MC Search. Okay. Yeah. Tell me, did, were you around ever when he? Yeah. When 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 Hammer expressed something about? Not that? with Red Man. That was later. He, I know he checked him, but I've been in some other situation where he checked some other other. Okay, cats let, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but, but but you said somebody else talked about his mother too. Yeah. Yeah. MC Search, and he's like Hammer really wanted to get him. We were trying to catch him where we could. What we did he, what did MC Hammer say concerning it? You know. Is that when I see you, I'm knocking you out. He talked to him? He got word to him. I don't know if they talked directly on the phone. But he sent word. The kite went out. Whenever I see you, I'm knocking you out. You're so, talking about my mama. So y'all had to have be, be on pretty good alert whenever y'all would go places because of the mm -hmm. way that Hammer moved. Was there certain things that y'all kind of basically prepared yourself for as you would go and travel to these different places? Oh, yeah. They go ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. Man, we had a guy on our on our crew that was a military. Um, That's how y'all move. Blue blue beret, what all that kind of stuff. He would, he would. What you call it? Corner, whatever you call that word. 
Go scope the scene out before we even get there. Case it. Yeah. Case it. He'll know everything going on, everything moving, every angle, exit, entries, exits, escape routes. Uh, it, it, well, at first, we used to laugh about it, trip, but TC was the real deal. He was military. He thought like that, and here's what he did. Made very strategic with everything we did, and we moved like that, man. Like, you know, it was, it was some serious. Was there ever, ever a time when, you know, things got heated and you didn't know y'all was almost into a situation where it could have you could have made lost everything in a sense far as it getting that wild that bad nah, nah. you see what i'm saying because yeah, yeah, yeah. you if if they shooting at you on stage uh -huh. if, if, if you don't never know what who's shooting or who gunning for what could happen yeah. so you got to be on top notch alert mm -hmm. and if you're on top notch alert that means you got to have security. Things can get crazy, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's a lot of y'all. How many of y'all was it, my nigga? God <laughs> dang, it was like, it, like Shout said, 50 million dancers in a big old band. Oh. I mean, I, it was a bunch of three, five, seven. I seen him on Arsenio Hall. It was five niggas out there with him, and I thought that was it, and they bust off, and then he opened the curtain up. It was a whole nother damn. I was one of them five. That's what I said. I knew that in was you. In the coat with the head on and all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wanted and he was looking to one side like yeah. that. We called the homeboy choir. That's what Hammer called us, the homeboy choir. But then when y'all burst off, it was a whole nother crew behind yeah. that. Dance crew, dance crew, dance crew, band, live band, dancers, background singers, both sides, five and five. Because those are some of the groups. From Hammer put everybody he had signed on stage. Special Generation, Soft Touch, um, me, all the dancers, and including other dancers. Cause after, you know, a lot of other artists he had finished their tours, Hammer would take their dancers if they was good enough. They'd be on the road with us. How much? How many? How, how many vehicles? What y'all have? Tour bands? We have buses. Buses? How, how many? many buses? We had like four, sometimes five. Y'all move with four or five buses. Uh -huh. That's a lot what, of paychecks. The, yeah. 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 Most definitely. Furthest place y'all went mm -hmm. from Oakland on those buses? We went all over the country. I've been to every major city in this country at least five times. Every one of them. Every major city. And in little bitty towns, too. Places you probably never heard of. Festivals and stuff like that. And that, and, and when y'all hit those t towns, it's something else I wanted to ask you about. There's a story also that you talked about, and, and shout out to Melvin Farmer. Um, and you brought up Michael Conception. <laughs> Michael Conception, uh, was we all the world, what is this? No, we're in the same game. We all in the same game. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And he was a guy that was in a wheelchair. Yeah, he still is. Still is. And yeah. get a lot of respect. You hear people talk about him mm -hmm. a lot of times now. Across on the, the West Coast. Yeah, they talk about him a lot. Let's, let me, you say there was an incident that happened with MC Hammer and mm -hmm. Michael Conception. Let's talk about that for a minute. We come out the hotel. No, we come out the, um, we had a function to do it somewhere up in Hollywood. I forget exactly where it was. We come out the back to get in the vans and cars and stuff to go back to the hotel because we was down doing our too legit to quit stuff, right? And we get out there. It's this dude in his wheelchair and about four or five dudes with him, you know, hanging out. I know they're Crips because my cousins are all Crips in L.A. So I'm like, that's a game banger. So what they doing out here? He's like, hey, I want to holler at you for a minute, Hammer. Now, the thing is, Mike already knew who Hammer was because they did the video. Mm -hmm. We were all in the same game before. So I'm like, what? How am I? So basically, he came with Hammer like, hey man, you know, it's LA and everything, man, and things can happen, you know what I'm saying? You to, you to holler at me, man, you know what I'm saying? Holler at me for protection. Hammer said, protection for what? You see, man, I got, I got 12 bodyguards out there. And for five of them, straight killer. You know what I'm saying? So, what you talking about? You know what I'm saying? I don't need no protection. He said, man, ain't stunning. They said, no, 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 for real though, man, you need to holler at me, man, you know, if you, you, know, if you don't, something could happen to you, whatever. Mm. He said, what you trying to say? He said, you know, he said, you need to go ahead and, you know, take care of that and everything will be cool. He said, nigga, you trying to start strangling on me, nigga? He said, man, you got me. Said, I'm, from the, I'm from the town. I'm from the, I'm from the Bay, baby. We don't play like that. So Lewis and his brother stepped up and they started cursing and going back and forth. Like, it's a standoff. So his boys, they, they show their stuff. They heat or whatever. Right. So our people, they drove down. They're ready. It's going to be a killing. That's and, one of them times. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be kidding. That but, was the time this, I was asking you but about. Everybody went out there though. This this is this one that whole crew was just a couple many, of us. How many? How many? Cause he said twelve bodyguards and y'all. So mm -hmm. is that all there was out there? With us, yeah, that we night, that particular night. Okay. The, the rest of the crew was back at the hotel. The, right. The dancing and all that. So they, back. they didn't want to part of what we wanted to go do something. Some kind of business hand was handling or whatever. But that's how he rolled. So 
it like it was a stand down maybe maybe two minutes of intenseness, you know. And uh, they looking like they were to get down and having them our people looking like, yeah, I'm waiting for you to move. Hammer like, hey, 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 what's up? He said, hey man, it's like this. I'll make one phone call and all this will go away. Mm. I'm through with it. Let's go. Load up everybody. We left. Next morning, my exception in the hotel, in the lobby. Hey man, he saw me. I was down there doing something, something. Hey man, hey, 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 you was out there with the hammer last night, wasn't you? I played like I didn't know what you're talking about. Hey man, t tell Hammer man, he talked to him, whatever, saw somebody one of our bodyguards, whatever. I guess they called and told Hammer what was up. Hammer wasn't studying him. You know what I'm saying? But when Hammer did come down, he, he I was like, hey, Hammer, let me hide you for a minute, whatever. Lewis walked past him. This is Michael Concepts? Yeah. Okay. Let me hide you for a minute. Man, oh man, man, hey bro, I apologize, man. Hey, man, let me talk to you for a minute. And Hammer said, what's up, man? He said, man, I apologize for the thing. I didn't know, you know, the people you knew or whatever, this and that. And, I apologize for what I did, brother. It's all good. We cool. We good. And Hammer's like, yeah, yeah, it's all right. Mm -hmm. But see, what he didn't know was, I don't know if you know Big West. Did you know Big West? Big West died last year, too, a year for last. R.I.P. to Big West. Big West was big time L.A. gangster. Mm. He, he, was, he was the muscle for Crip? Solar. Yeah. Solar Records and all that back in the day. You know what I'm saying? All that. Death Row. West the one introduced Suge. That's how we knew who Suge was. Suge came out around. To, huh? to Hammer. Yeah, yeah. Suge, Suge was just nigga fresh out the field, you know, football or whatever. Security. He, security. He wanted to get in the game of, you know, security or whatever. He worked, and Wes said, I'm going to issue the game, put you on. Wes was, was also the security for uh, Al Heyman. Mm. Okay. And so, so you know where Al Heyman is. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Al yeah, Heyman yeah. was also our promoter on tour. With him, so they, it all connected now. So I know Eddie C, he gone too. That was Al Heyman right there, man, too. Eddie C died about a year or two ago. All these old cats, man, gangsters. So we know what's going on, but Wes, Wes made the call, it's on. He big, big time crip. So big OG. And he and heard what had happened. Yeah, yeah, so he like, I'm cool, man, all right, man. And we never had no problems with Mike ever, ever again. Never had no, never again. You, you know? see him, it was always love. It was always love, yeah. Wow, and he's still, he's still doing his thing. I know, Mike had got, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, Mike, I don't say he messed over the money. Mike got a, got a contract from Warner Brothers back in the day when he did the stuff with Hammond him, 40 million. That was unheard of back in the day. Mm. And you know, he's straight gangster from Carson. Strong arm, he's strong arm, Teddy, strong arm, Bobby, and Babyface, and the list goes on and on. He thought he was gonna do it to us. It wasn't going down. Wow, so you you, you know that these guys was having to kick in. Yeah, yeah. Because the rumors go and around, they, they check talk. In. Yeah, and they're still doing it to this day. Yeah. So it's still going on to this day. I mean, major. Major, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because how you heard about all of those other people, people talk, and that's how you heard about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, well, Hammer said it. You know, oh, he told okay. who, who all do. He said, man, yeah, dude out here extorting people, trying, you know what I'm saying, trying to take their money. He ain't getting none of my money. Wow, so Hammer pretty much told you those those names. That's how and, you know. And then I heard this. I heard Hammer, when he was talking on my life, to um, Jerry, not Jerry Smith, what's his name, Jay Smith, the, the CEO, Capital. You know what I'm saying? We had a problem the other night. <laughs> we just sold 10, 15 million albums. Uh, who, who who approached you? Okay. What's his name? Okay. Not a problem. And you never had another problem again. Mm. Wow. So whoever it was must, you know, came from top down. Right. You franchise. We can't have nothing happen to you. You're making us too much damn money. Mm. You can't go on a European tour with Dick Clark. And wow. That's what and that's for. Cause we graduated from Al Heyman, which you know how they do when you get so large, take away the black, and we're gonna go to the other side. Right. And it, it went it went bigger, man. And I remember performing on the uh, the American Music Awards, 1990. Wow. How Dick was that? Dick Clark came backstage and said, "Hey, guys, y'all gonna be in front of 64 million tonight, doing y'all worldwide watching y'all." And I got scared. I was like, "Damn, 64 million." Ooh, Lord, please don't let me mess up on my parts, Lord. I sung the hell out that song. What song no, did you sing? Do Not Pass It By. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me, it. Herman, Tremaine Hawkins. The legendary Tremaine Hawkins. Wow. Yeah, man. And I, Was that the biggest um, crowd you've ever been in front of? 64 no. million? What's the biggest crowd? Well, that was TV-wise. That was TV. -wise. That was TV. Okay. That was TV -wise. difference, yeah. Biggest crowd we was in front of was about 100,000. Mm -hmm. We was in uh, somewhere in Wisconsin, some a big old, big old open field. It was muddy, raining, like almost like... What you call that stuff? Blue stock or cardinella? What the new stuff they do now? Yeah, it was thousands, thousands. I just it was a hundred thousand people out there. Wow. Amongst amongst other artists. I want to go back to uh, Suge Knight. 
Yeah. Um, I told him all come on here, OG Pyru, mm-hmm. and he he say um, that he pretty much say Suge Knight was the only one that wasn't really a gang member, and he wasn't even in the gang. But at the end of the day, he ended up going to prison, and he was the only one that didn't talk. He would say stuff like that. Mm-hmm. When you first met uh, Suge Knight, mm-hmm. did he did he put you in the mind of somebody that was in a gang? Well, I mean, he, he played that role, you know, big tough homeboy from Compton. So he you know always saying? played that role. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's did cool, you guys ever have a run in? Nah, nah, nah. We he knew that. No, it'd have been like the other dude. He's been knocked out, but I didn't play. I'm gonna yeah. tell you about that in a minute too. What's that? <laughs> We had, a, we had a policy in Hammer's Posse when everybody, if you had problems, you know, with that many people on the road together, you're going to have friction. You're going to have your problems. People going to get into it and get an argument. Girls don't like girls and guys don't like guys or whatever. So Hammer's like, we going to never fight no fist fights. I'm going to pull the gloves out. Because we had two cats in our crew that was golden gloves. So Hammer, we, we bought some gloves, professional boxing gloves. He said, you got any problems? We gonna we gonna fight out with the gloves on. That way you ain't all beat up and bruised and busted eyes and lips and all that. Or if something new happen, you get busted. We are gonna stop it. So get your frustration out. Whoever you don't like, you wanna fight him. Y'all come on, let's go. Everybody gonna watch. You gonna put a big old circle around. You put you in the middle and say go for it. So we would box all the time. Wow. You ain't gonna believe me, CEO. I whooped every damn body in the crew. Everybody. All the bodyguards. Every last one of them. Benito. I believe you're a country boy. You're a country nigga. Hit harder than a mule kick. <laughs> you, end up, you end up whooping all of them. All of them. Every last one of them. I said, y'all Kelly niggas is weak. Y'all ain't got no, y'all ain't got no real hands. Y'all, uh, they couldn't deal with the country boy. We put them Arkansas losing on the bees on you, boy. You're going to get beat to death. They couldn't fight. They had no coordination. It was all uncoordinated. And they, was, but was, they were big, but they didn't know how. They was just big. That's it. Big. One of the hammers took his bodyguards. Silk. We got. We used to always get on the bus and we all play with each other. You know what I'm saying? He'll he'll haul off and hit me like pow. If I ain't paying attention, I can't brace for it. You know, he, he knocked me down or whatever. But I hit him right back. We hit each other back. So one day I come on the bus and then get ready to start the tour. I never forget that tour too. Going to go to Albany, uh, Georgia. Got on the bus. He got up there and he was standing up up on the bus. He, he fired down on me and I turned my shoulder like this. When he hit my shoulder, he broke his hand. Wow. The bone came through. Yeah. and so Just hitting you. Just, yeah. to, just messing around. Hamill got mad because that was one of the top guys. He said, you up here playing, and you done hurt yourself playing with Benito. And you know what I'm saying? I know y'all like do what y'all do, but now you um, are a liability because your hand messed up. So he had to go to the hospital, had surgery, had a cast. He came back on the road. But uh, I broke his hand. He hit me across my shoulder, and uh, he broke his hand on my shoulder. Wow, big old country nigga eating them steaks and Man. potatoes and was chicken it. and all that. that. That nigga was solid, boy. Getting it. Getting it. I, I just, you you tell a story uh, on the documentary about Ice Cube. <laughs> I want to hear that story, and I want to contest it because Ice Cube is uh, one of those guys. I'm a big fan of Ice Cube. Me too. But when I heard this, I couldn't believe it because... Ice Cube is the same Ice Cube when when I think what was the name of that record Priority that, mm. that when they took his money mm. he went in there with that bat. Mm. Ice Cube is the same one that brawl with NWA when he mm. had to you know when he had to leave them boys and they got to beefing on the straight out of Compton. Now now you tell another story. He went gangster like that and it was crazy. But and, but and you th- might think I'm trying to contradict you. Let me let me let me run it to you. After the situation this years this years later he didn't even remember me. I was for the sign a deal with Ice Cube. After all of this? Yes. With Lynch Mob. <laughs> this was crazy. So let's talk about the story first. Okay. You, I want to hear, like, you was at, you say you was at Roscoe's Chicken Roscoe's and Wobble. Chicken and Wobble in Which Hollywood. Which one of them? Hollywood. Hollywood. Right off of Vine. And, and tell me what happened. And uh, we was at the hotel, chilling, because we was down for the two legit to quit. All this shit happened, man, like in a, in a matter of a month. A, different, a lot of different events. So... One of the, I guess, people, spies, whatever. Hammer, Ice Cube is at, at uh, Hollywood. But uh, what did Ice Cube and Hammer have issues about? The, the, the video he made. He had a video. I mean, he tied Hammer up, put the duct tape on him, threw him in the trunk. And what was the name of that shot song? Him. Uh, I can't remember. But I remember the video. I <laughs> yeah. remember it. Yeah, him, him and, uh, him and uh, Pooh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
So, so what? And and Hammer got wind that y'all was at the same place at we, the same time. Yeah, he in Hollywood. We was right over the over the over the uh, the mountain. We was we stand off of La, uh, La Hanga. We stayed at the uh, Universal Sheridan, right there by the Universal City, California. So we had to come down, come around, come over, over the mountain, over the hill. Boom, we're right there at Hollywood. Get off the exit. They go Rascal Chicken and Waffle. So they called and said, he said, he there, he, he over here right now. Hammer, he, he gonna get some food. He said, stall him out, stall him out. Like, whatever, don't let him leave. You know, hold him. So we run up there, about 89 of us. And uh, he was in there, and he getting his food. So we waited him to come out. When he came out, Hammer stepped out. Like, you remember, I'll you for a minute. You know what I'm saying? He said, oh, hey, what's up, Emma? He got the food in his hand, looking crazy, like, what's up? He said, uh, hey, man, what's this stuff about you, you know, doing a video? He told him the same thing, he told Short. I'm out there trying to do, you know, good, man. Y'all come on, you know, it's cool, the gangster rap and all that kind of stuff, though, but I'm breaking barriers for us, bro. Why are you trying to tear me down as a black man? You know what I'm saying? Putting that gang shit up in here, putting me in the truck and all that kind of crazy, man. Our people don't want to see that. And then you, then you disrespecting me in the music. Man, I'm an artist, man. I'm being creative. You know what I'm saying? He said, man, you don't let it happen. Hammer, I'm sorry, man. I apologize, brother. I didn't know it was going to be like that. You know, I'm, I, I apologize. And all you looking at all you niggas standing around him like, they finna whoop my ass. You know? So that was it. Damn, but you tell another story on, a part on it. About, uh, yeah, <laughs> he assaulted himself a little bit. He what? He had pissed on himself. It, how you should that could have been some of the juices from the it might have been it could have been from the look, boxes of food nigga. okay as most people say no, I'm not gonna play with no, you like you as most nigga. people say you know what I'm allegedly, saying allegedly allegedly but it was some water in the front you see nah, he the, a gangster body. he ain't gonna do all that that's now. what I said he's a who Gangster. Well, he say he ain't no gangster. No, he ain't no gangster, but but he a stand up dude, man. No, yeah, yeah. But you seen this? I'm trying to tell you. I know an incident. Another one. I know he ain't gangster. Cube is not a gangster. What incident? Wait a Cube, minute. You know Cube. another what incident. What other incident are you talking? Him. Well, his chain got taken and he got knocked out at the red light. And he didn't go back and Wait go get minute. it. Yeah, I, don't about that. I don't know nothing about yeah, that. What, uh, what over, happened? Over, over, over in, uh, in the valley. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of dude's name. It was a big, big box. It's one of them. One of them gangsters. He was into it with or whatever. One of the cats. Caught him sleeping at the light one day. Jumped out. And knocked him out. Knocked his tooth out. He has a false tooth in front. I see it. And he didn't go back and get his chain or none? No. Because the dude who did it, gang related. And, and he and, knew and, exactly who it yeah, was. Yeah, it had been a lot of funk. It had been a lot of funk. And he just let it go. You know mm. what I mean? Well, Ice Cube always say that he ain't really just no gang. No, 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 no. He always say that. But let me get back to the crazy part. You listening to Jamaica? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. So, this years later, I'm in LA doing my thing. Me and my cousin got a record label. Martin Entertainment, and best friend, I just say his name, Big E. Mm -hmm. Big E um, used to go with Ice Cube's wife back in the day. And uh, he saw her one day at a spot. He's like, yo, he said, my little homeboy, and my, 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 my best friend got a record label, they need some help, you know what I'm saying? Put him on, because that's before I signed with uh, BT and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, uh, they're trying to get their record out or whatever. She said, okay, she said, uh, he, but he an R&B artist, though. I know y'all doing the gangster stuff, but you need to, yeah, R&B, she said, well, my husband, he loves R&B. And I didn't know that. I said, Cuba like R&B? Old school and new. Mm -hmm. So I didn't say shit about the back in the day, you know, when it happened at the Roswell. I don't say nothing about it. I'm like, okay, we got a meeting. Okay, let's go. Had the meeting, met with Q, sit down, him and my cousin. Yo, I'm with Lynch Mob. I got, you know, the distribution out of Minnesota. I forget the name of the, the distribution company he had or whatever. They were doing pretty good. He, he had Yo-Yo and a couple of others. So, he like, his damn manager, I'll never forget her ass, Pat Chardonnay. Wow. She steps in. We doing a 50-50 deal. We don't think the deal is enough. We need to do, we need to have more control. It has to be an 80-60. I mean, no. 80, 80, whatever. 80-20. Yeah, 80-20. So, what? Uh, what? No, wait a minute. We're doing a 50 50. Um, Q, I need to talk to you. So they went in the back and came back. She came back at the damn little talk, whatever. Um, well, me as his representative, uh, we're not going to be able to do this deal because I don't. we don't feel that it's going to be beneficial to us because you're an RB artist and Ice Cube brand is gangster and we do gangster music and we don't want to tarnish that because some of his fans in the gangster world may not like all this RB stuff. You have a great project and I wish you the best of luck, but. We're gonna pass on this on this deal. Wow. wow. So she she really messed it up. Pat Chardonnay. Yeah. You'll never forget that I'll name. I'll never forget that. Pat Chardonnay. Screw Joe. B I. She screwed Joe. 
I said, maybe that's my payback from back in the day when I was going to have <laughs> <laughs> well, that, but like I said, man, that shit was funny. That, that, that history, <laughs> something else, man. Cause like hey. I said, you never would have. Like I say, Cube is the type of dude that uh, he basically is one of the guys that I just feel like he wouldn't. You know, you know, he he one of them guys. I, he, he's dope, bro. He got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, <laughs> I want to ask you about. Uh, let's get back to it. I want to. Um, Deion Sanders, man, and MC Hammer had a hell of a uh, relationship. I always kicked it with him. He he had a lot of respect for him. It's funny because both of them love God right now on a whole nother level. Yes. When you, you know, um, but you guys ran into each other back during the days. And uh, um, how was it when you first met Deion Sanders? The first day you met him? I was, I, I wasn't no groupie or nothing though, but I was happy to see him, you know, because I knew his history, Prime what he was time. doing. And then just by being with Hammer and he coming into the fold, it was like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I like him. Because he was a, young. He was very yeah, young at this he's time. He's a baseball player and a football player. So How old was he when you guys ran into him? Dion might have been 25, 26. 25. So he was getting to the money. He had that money. Yeah, he was a little older. Yeah, because I was like, what, 20? He was a couple years older. Oh, he had that, he got his deals. He he he, he mm-hmm. playing with that paper. Yeah. yeah Describe his personality. Um, very serious. About everything, even back then. He was like Hammer. He didn't play no. He didn't like playing games. I'm that way too. I'm a Scorpio, so I don't. I don't like. I, people say stuff. I, I will, they be like, "Why are you not laughing?" My sense of humor is good, but I don't know if you playing or you for real. I'm just laying. Okay, okay, I get it now. Well, <laughs> you know, don't take it wrong way, but I mean, I don't like to play games. I don't even know how to play. I better know how to play checkers. You talking Growing about up, me? I never played cards. I never played Tonk and all that bluefish or whatever, goldfish and all that crap, man. I don't even know how to play dominoes, the jail shit, none of that. No, never. You know. So, so Deion Sanders uh, was was real quick with uh, business. Yes, I um, back. And and what was what was some of the conversations you you can you remember you and him conversating about things? You know. Well, you know, his dad came on the road with us. We took care of his dad for about two years before he died. Wow, Pop Sanders, that was his dad. They identical. Like Dion's sons look just like him. So you, you know, met a dad first know. before you met the son, or you met the, the sons son weren't first? born yet. No, you met the dad before you met Dion. Dion. No, 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 no. We so he Dion. introduced you. to Yeah, him. and then he's like, "Hammer." He said, "Man, my, my dad on drugs and stuff. Man, I need to, you know, so I need somebody to watch me. Nobody to watch me down there." And uh, and uh, was it Myrtle? Not Myrtle Beach. Um, Fort Myers. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I want to get him away from here. You know, he was already loving his mama, but his daddy, like you know, I love my daddy, man. I, you know, he kind of sick or whatever. Be on the road and you know, get show him a little excitement. Like, okay, cool, we got him. He came on the road with us, man. We love Pop Sanders. Pop Sanders was a damn trip. Oh yeah, you know what, 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 yeah. what memories can you give me with Pop Sanders? He was just very, you know, say all the wise stuff, you know, as, as a grandpa. You know, what I'm saying we looked at him like like granddaddy. You know, he was just cool, sit back chilling. He always had that certain swag about him. You know, and Dion would come out every once in a while and hang so out. So that's with where customers. Dion got it from. Yeah, from his daddy. He did definitely got it from his dad. How old was he when he was the um the daddy? How old was the daddy at that time? Probably sixty something. Okay. Yeah, right at sixty something. Wow. Right 60 and you tell a story about uh, us yeah, running. Yeah, you called him out. <laughs> well, how did you call him <laughs> out? I thought partner, about that. Like, my yeah, Jimmy. Like, how did you how did you call him out? We used to. I'm saying something about Hammer. Hammer is very very competitive, so we like to compete and everything. So. We knew we could run, you know what I'm saying? We was fast. But we were like, Dion, you know what I'm saying? He was out there with us today. We was working out that morning. He was working out with us. He's like, yeah. He said, we can beat you running. He's like, what? Y'all, because our boys are slow. Y'all can be, I'm from Florida. Boy, I'm, I'm fast as the wind. We're like, mm-hmm, whatever. So to really test your endurance, you run on the beach. If you can run, you run the beach, boy, you can get it. Because you run through that sand. And um, we got in the flat part where the water was, and the ground was hard. Mm-hmm. So... You know, like on a 50 yard dash or whatever it was. So, Dion said, I got so much confidence in me, I can beat y'all. I'm going to run y'all backwards. We like, do what? He said, Y'all won't go forward. I'm going I'm to run back. I'm going to backpedal with y'all. That's how much confidence I believe. I can beat y'all boys. And he said, Matter of fact, I'm going to give y'all a five foot step. Like, man, you done lost your mind. Mm. Shh. Hammer got up there and said, Y'all ready, set, go. We took off. We thought we were getting it. Man, maybe a second or two, Dion doing it right here, coming back, looking at us, backpedaling. Like, wait a minute, whoa. So we try to turn it on. Man, Dion turned around, spin around, and went forward. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just stepped away from us. Like it wasn't nothing. Like it was nothing. I said, God, I ain't fast. 
Y'all better not race nobody ever again. Yeah. No, no, so, that's Dion. Dion's so fastest like, man to ever play ball. We asked no, Dion. Uh, yeah, he is. The fastest? I believe yeah. so. So, Dion, how fast are you? He said, man, I ain't never thought about it. He said, I don't know how fast I am. I really, really been, they, they say I'm so they four, don't four, time four, three. It. Yeah, he said, he said, but uh, he told him, he said, man, you, they had a nerd to ask me one time to run against a damn horse. Wow. <laughs> he said, yeah, like I got Joe Lewis. You know, Joe Lewis did that back in the day. He said, I wish the hell I would run against a damn horse. You know, damn monkey. You ain't just a monkey show. He said, man, I never do that. Wow. He said, but I, I really, you know, I know. He said, they tried to clock me when I was in uh, Florida State. He said, they really, I don't know how fast I am. Do you? He said, but I do know that I'm one of the fastest men in the world, though. Mm. I do know that. Yeah, and with comedy. Wait, yeah, he said, well, I break on that ball. Nobody beat me breaking on that ball. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you this, though. Like, do, do you, when you look at him now and him being in Colorado and the things that he's accomplished in, you know, yeah. his career, like, um, could you see that coming way back then that he would be doing something like he's doing now? I knew that greatness was all over Dion. Uh, I knew that back then. I just know the magnitude it would be later on in life. You know, because, uh, you know, after he got out of it, the NFL, I knew he started doing stuff out in Texas, you know, for his kids and the Pee Wee League and all that kind of stuff and building it up. And I said, man, he's going to be big one day with something else. I said, sure, it would be good if he ever go to college and come back to the pros and coach the pros because he know the, you know the ropes or become a defensive coach. You know, something that, you know, he's accustomed to. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. Um, you one of those guys that you was around a lot of people. Did you ever run into, uh, say, Snoop or any of those guys during that time? Because they was a little younger than y'all. Yeah, they, 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 wasn't, they wasn't popular like that. They was they, younger than y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't, in, Death Row wasn't, wasn't hitting like that. Who was the, the main ones that back then that you, you know, when it come down to just the people that was in y'all's, y'all's, you know, uh, 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 you know, y'all peers, the people that was around, who was the groups then? Well, you know, we had several tours. You know, one of the tours we started out, the first two I was on was with In Vogue. Okay, okay, I'm Troop, with you. Troop, After Seven, MC Hammer, and I think that was it. Then the next tour we went on, it was a short tour because we wound up kicking his ass off the tour. Whoa. Vanilla Ice. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, so Vanilla Ice is on tour. Vanilla Ice is one of them guys who was around a lot back yeah. then. Yeah, they, they fell out, but they cool again now. Yeah. Brandon Winkle, whatever his damn name is. He went on tour with us. They put them together. Um, and he from uh, Dallas. Yeah, Dick, 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 Dick Clark put us together. So he went on the road with us for a little while, maybe about three months. This is what he started doing. He was cool. All, you know how I always do us. All American white boy trying to dance like Hammer and all that bullshit. Anyway, he would go out in front of the stage every night and watch our show. And he could do performing. And start, you know what I'm saying, copycat and see what we do. he go on stage before us. He would do some of the same moves, trying to do the same moves Hammer was doing, and emulating stuff that Hammer was doing, we doing it throughout our show. So it got to the point Hammer checked him one night. He said, hey man, uh, you stop, you know what I'm saying, I, 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 I come to check out, you doing some of my moves in my show, you stealing my stuff. It ain't cool, you know what I'm saying, that's me. You know what I'm saying, it gotta be original. He didn't like it. So Hammer like, okay. So, yeah. so Hammer told him that. Yeah. Well, how do you know he didn't like it? Because he acted like it. You, he, he had that. Yeah, he had that, that movement, that body and language, whatever. And then right after that, Hammer Rose said, we're going to have a problem. We're going to have a problem. He, gonna he be a did problem. it again? Yeah, he did it again. The next time he did it, we told him we had a fallout. Hammer said, nigga, get off my tour. You ain't got to be out here. Get your ass out of here. Oh, you, 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 you seen him when he checked? Yes, we'll place you tomorrow. Get your ass about out of here. What did he, he say? Nothing like like me. Did he? No, what was he going to say? He would have whooped the shit out of him. He, would, he had his little crew. <laughs> but his crew was yeah, real. Yeah, three, four dudes. He had him. A dancer like him, and the, uh, the um, his media guy and the DJ. That was it. And when y'all kicked him out, he just he he, he didn't say he was just looking, just looking. Just, a little. just the just the fucked up shit about it though. They came right back, Dick Clark and them. A month later, this bastard come to every city we came to right behind us. They set up a tour for him that fast and put him in every city we came to right behind us. Vanilla Ice, you know what I'm saying, with one damn song, Ice Ice Baby. That's all he had. That's all he had. Do the doom, doom, doom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the shit you didn't know that that happened. I did know. not know that, you know, and and so we, I, I I could tell he he eating right now. He buying and selling homes and doing a lot of stuff. I think he in Florida. Mm-hmm. We came out of that tour. Then we did the next tour was MC Hammer, TLC. Ba- yeah, 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 yeah. TLC is yeah, TLC. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the girls right there. Yeah, T Bar. Yeah, and then we wanted left up, eye chili. Then we wanted up picking up uh, boys and men. 
That's what I was gonna ask you about. Yeah, and then that's when Left Eye and One Year got together. One Year got together with Left Eye. Yeah, that was a good, man. That shit was so high school. They were wearing I'm his, she's her, I'm yours, he's mine, I'm her shirt. Aww. I was like, but I'm gonna tell you something about I love Left Eye, man. Lisa Lopez, I loved her to death, but she was very, very artistic and, and crazy and creative. Um, she liked to play games. I mean, pranks all the time. Putting fake boo boo on your seat when you get on the bus, so like that. Come up to you, CEO, what's up, boy, what's up? Shake your hand, that buzzer thing and that thing. You like, ah! She liked to play them games. She played a lot of games. She had the biggest eyes, man. She, remember the cat on, uh, the cat, uh, the, the cat to be with um, uh, Eddie Murphy and, him and, the, and, the, and the donkey. What the cat name? Damn. He was Spanish, the Spanish cat with the sword. I don't forget, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, him. She had eyes like that cat. When the, the cat look at you, going, mm. she had eyes like that, man. Would melt your body, man. What did you when when you found out she because she was in another country when she passed away? I was saying, what, what what how was it when you heard it? How did you hear about it? I heard on social media that she had uh, or TMZ or whatever it was that she was deceased. She had a wreck and whatever and killed her. I automatically thought that somebody killed her or whatever. She didn't just die like that, but uh, all that Dr. Savy stuff came together, you know. So. It's a lot of different discrepancies. Alleged this, alleged this. You know, you can't really can't speak on a lot of that because you don't really know no no. They was you know, filming a lot over there too. They yeah. kept that footage. She was healing. Thing. She was healing a lot. Got to say, was definitely healing her body and helping her physically with her mind because you know she was kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw that on tour. You know, but like T. Bob, she stay sick all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she had, a lot of time to cancel. She had? Uh, loop. I mean, she got lupus. I oh. mean, sickle cell. Sickle cell. Yeah. Sickle cell. Yeah. So a lot of times they wouldn't do the shows because she'd be sick. She can make it, take up a day or two off, she come back and do her thing. She a little something. She was a little something. Why <laughs> what do you, you mean? say that? She was a little something. She? <laughs> Explain. She was a little firecracker. She was some serious. Beautiful, though. And it was crazy. That's her why and they left call her Chili. Okay. Her <laughs> and Left Eye both, they four foot 11. They were four foot 11. They were little bitty, they look like little girls, little kids. They wear them big old ass clothes. Like, damn, you got the big ass clothes on for you. What the hell? One day, her and Wanye came out the hotel. Lisa had on a damn sundress. Everybody was like, what? I was like. Because she's like, like, dressed like a tomboy all the time. Yeah. I was like, uh, what's her name? The brat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boy, wait a minute. She was fine. She got yams. Damn. <laughs> you didn't even you, know you, it. You never tell without a big clothes. Without big well. clothes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they dated for a little while. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Until I'll, the tour ended. And I don't know what happened after that or whatever. Talk to me about when uh, Boys and Men, uh, when the when the, when the guy got killed. I want to, uh, because you talked about it on documentary. Yeah. Their ma it was their road manager, right? Yeah, Khalil Roundtree. Clear, clear. Respect to Khalil and his family man. and everybody, man. I, that you was know, a crazy thing. His boys moment. was little. Yeah, little bit of boys at the time. And we was on the road, and I used to sit down and talk. I was, I was like to get knowledge. You know what I'm saying? I want to know what's going on, what's happening. I, I thirst for that. And he sit down and talk to me. He always smoked cigars. Big old man. You know what I'm saying? Like a big uncle, a big you know, father figure. So one day we was talking about something, we were doing something, they're ready to leave, goes, he's like, yo, I'm gonna get to the part. But he told, he said, uh, what you gonna do, man? I said, nothing, chilling. He said, uh, I had a little friend, I talked to a little girl in the lobby or whatever, you know, not no groupie, but you know, I was trying to get down. He said, uh, you got a room? I said, no, nah, man, I'm a partner in the room, and we gotta, you know, do our thing. With he said, hey, take my key to my room. He said, I just asked you to do one thing. Don't, hey, run, up, don't run up my incidentals. Mm. I said, okay. So it became a routine because the boys and men would always go to the city before us and they had to, sometimes they didn't stay in the hotel, they'd leave. So whatever it was, Khalil would always find me and give me the key to his room wow. and tell me, hey man, have fun, enjoy yourself. So a little while I went by, maybe a month, my roommate somehow told Hammer that I'd be standing in Khalil rooms or whatever. So one day I'm in the room, I get a night door. I go to the door, it's Hammer. And his partner Juice and, and Hammer's brother Lewis, I had a suite up on the kidding. top floor. <laughs> kicking it. Hey, Hammer go to the room and said, What the hell going on in here? Wait a minute. He said, Yeah, you you the work up there, boss. How you have a room better than mine? But you know, hey, hey, get your stuff moved out. You're gonna take my room. I'm taking this room. But they got us a badass room. But you know, the record labels was paying for the rooms on the road, yeah. you know, the tour and whatever. It was a penthouse suite. Look overlooking the city, man. Glass. I just knew I won't have it set up that night, boy. We were nice. <laughs> he called you. Yeah, he called me. I said, like, damn. 
So every city we go to, he always check my room. Somebody come check my room, the bodyguard. <laughs> he got a regular room tonight. He ain't got no suite. He got a regular room. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is a boy. Look at that. Look at that. Damn, man. Let you my live. Shit. Yeah, you, yeah, you can have my room. Don't worry about it. Well, let's Don't talk, move. Let's talk about the day about you lost him. Yeah. Yeah. So we in, we in Chicago. It was a great day, man. Michael Bibbs was there. Talked to the boys, hang out and everything. Minister Farrakhan was there. Wow. And we was loving it. It was crazy, but like, we was in the, on the stage. Mr. Fair comes out like five rows out from the stage, right? But it, see, this, see this triangle? Mm -hmm. He was sitting inside the triangle. All of the brothers was like a triangle around him, standing wow. up. Mm. Right? Protecting him and his wife. He didn't move. Show was over. Everybody came into the hotel. <clears throat> so everybody chilling or whatever. We had a curfew. Everybody been in rooms by 11 o'clock. You know, that a thing. If you didn't find nothing in the lobby, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it, that's it. Stuff. Go to the room, lay down, get ready for the next day. You know what I'm saying? And, and then the group is just all over. You got called down or whatever. You, you say, you dry. You dry. Or they say, you have no I in your hall show. <laughs> if you, she ain't left with you by this time. Like she ain't going. Go to the room, man. You know, <clears throat> the bodyguards had to do a check by the rooms. So me and my partner, Ace Juice, Amazon's friend, one in the group, Ace Juice, we sit in the room chilling. And all of a sudden, we watch the TV here. We're like, whoa, damn, what's that? Damn, man, it sounded like a damn gunshot. So we scared to open the door at first. So we open the door and look out in the hall, and we couldn't hear nothing. We could hear people running. Boom, 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 boom. Like, but it was below us, right? Like, what the hell? The next thing we saw, I hear screams. We like, oh, shit. So we ran down to the elevator. The elevator was jammed up, we couldn't get on it. So we got in the staircase and went down the next staircase and got off, opened up, and the elevator was open. And when our body was standing there, and told him, stand back, don't, don't come over, don't come over here. But we walked over anyway. And I seen my partner, Khalil, and that man laid back in, in uh, Quadri, who was his other bodyguard for boys and men. He was shot in the leg. He was out there laying down on, 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 on the hall on the floor. And Khalil was in there with his head to the side, looking up like this man, looking straight in the sky. His whole side was gone, man. They shot him inside his head, temple. Mm. And the story goes, they came up on the floor, the guys, three guys. What up, hammer girls at? We want, we want to party with them hammer girls. Come to find out, it was a damn bellman from downstairs and a bellman from across the street, the other hotel, and another one of their friends. They came up on the floor, they was drunk, I think, knocking on doors. They knocked on one of the boys, and me and doors, I think, Sean Stockman, and Sean was like, El Khalil, some guys knocking on the door, talking about what the hammer girls, they're hiding in the hall. They're disturbing, we're trying to go to sleep. So Khalil and them got up and came out there to you know, escort them down, say, hey man, ain't no hammer girls up here, y'all gotta go. You a lie, nigga. We 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 put the bags to their room today. They up and down on this floor right here. But what it was, they was on our floor. The floor up. He had forgot, but he had walked with our work with our bodyguards, taking the bags up to all the girls' room and put them in their room. So he knew they was there, but he knew what floor. He had forgot. He gets drunk, and man, I guess they're taking them down. They're coming down to the flows, and uh, shot Khalil in the head and shot Quadri because Quadri grabbed a gun, tried to get away and do wanted to shoot him, and uh, they got away. Damn. So. The next morning, well, that same but night. But they knew who they were, so they got arrested, right? Room started flying so so fast. We didn't know. Hell, we thought it was Illuminati. We thought that <clears throat> shit, Farrakhan had did it. But Farrakhan was up in the room with Hammer, talking to him, and mm -hmm. having, having a conversation with Hammer and stuff. So and all the Muslims, they came down, too. They was everywhere. When they, when they, when they went off, they locked the hotel down. Boy, we, we down in the lobby. Everybody in the lobby trying to see what's going on. But the whole hotel was surrounded by Muslims. Like on Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. oh, shit. <laughs> them boys powerful. Them boys was outside. Stopping anybody from coming yeah, in or Yeah, the police, they, they, yeah, they, they, the police had come through them to get in. Because the minister was still upstairs with a hammer. And they didn't want to let them leave. So the detectives, whatever it was, they took us all down to the precinct and interviewed about 150 people. We thought we were going to miss our show the next day. The, next show, the show was the next day in Milwaukee. And at the time, we had our own plane. You know, we had a, we had a 737 Boeing jet. Dang. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Pepsi and to take all y'all. Oh yeah, we flew every day, and I loved it, baby. Because we met somebody, we met a girl in another city. We could put them on a plane; they could fly with us for free. Mm. <laughs> Our only obligation was when they get ready to go back home, we could uh, we had to send them back a flight on a regular flight, fly them back home, mm -hmm. or put them on the bus. Right. See, this is another thing we had a policy with our, with our situation. I don't want to get off. Let me let me, let me let me stop. Let me stop. So we did the interviews and whatever. And they let us go, got on a plane, made our flight, made it to the next city, but the concert was short. Hammer, Hammer was kind of down too. 
The only thing I hated about the whole situation was I wouldn't even go to the, to the funeral and see my, my friend be laid to rest. Hammer told him I couldn't go. Cause he said, I know how close you and Clue. I said, but I want to go. I want to be there. Why he couldn't Hammer go? went. Hammer and one of the bodyguards went. Why weren't you respect. able to go? He wouldn't let me go. He, he didn't told, tell you why? No, nah, not really. He just told me I couldn't go. I like, all right, man. Wow, man. But, um. RIP, yeah, it was crazy. But the guys who did it, Roger. one of the dudes who was messing his system up, he he came and told it. Told them where the gun was, where they threw the gun away in the, in the, in the river, and they found the gun, all that. So they got arrested? Yeah, all of them, all three of them. That's I don't crazy. know how much time they all got, but I know it's in the books. So you can Google mm -hmm. it, look it up. Wow. That messed us up, man. Khalil was so cool. Wow. I, I just felt for his kids, you know? That was my partner, man. That was my partner, partner. Man. Yeah. You told a story about meeting... Hey, Michael Jackson. Hey, the glove. You see my hand. Actually, out. in my life, I saw Michael Jackson twice. Wow. We're gonna talk about the first one. I'm gonna tell you about the second. Okay. Uh, let's talk about you meeting Michael Jackson at the hotel. Once again, I told you all these events happened when we was in, doing the two to quit scenario. Um, we was up on the, on the, in Hammer's room on the floor going on rehearsal for the video shoot. Two to quit. You know. And this is in Hollywood. In Hollywood at the Universal Sheridan. Unbeknownst to us, Michael had rented the floor be below us, the whole f floor. We was on top of him. And uh, we was in the room rehearsing. We was in the ballroom or whatever. When the suites on the end, that's where the suites at. So they dancing, bump, you know, dancing. But you know, boy, you bump, you don't care if it's concrete or whatever. You still going to hear some sounds. So two dudes show up at the door. I'm sitting by the door because I'm sitting down watching, I mean, a bodyguard and a couple of people. Knock at the door. Open the door. These two dudes look like CIA agents. You know, black suits on with the thing mm -hmm. in their ear. Uh, excuse me, uh, whose room is this? They're like, what, 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 who the hell is you, the police? They're like, nah, what, what you want to know for? This is Craig, Hammer's best friend. They're like, man, what the hell you want? He said, uh, we have a message for you. He said, uh, you're disturbing the glove one. He said, the who? The glove one? Yeah. He said, the glove one asked you to keep the noise down, please. He said, why is he telling us? Call the, call the damn uh, front desk or whatever, tell them. Tell them to tell us. We, on, we got three floors in this hotel. And you didn't know who the glove owner was at the time? Or did you know? And, and he, Craig didn't pay no attention to it. Okay. And the hammer came up. What's going on? What's going on? Who, what, what's up? What's up? He said, we have a message from uh, the glove one. He said, once you be, he said, glove one who? Who you talking about? Glove one. Mike? He said, yes, sir. He said, D. Mike? <laughs> yes, sir. Michael Jackson. Tell your Mike to come up here and tell me yourself, then, if you want me to be quiet. He said, Mike? He said, well, he said where he at? He said, he's right below you, sir. He said, Michael Jackson? I'm so stomping the floor. Get yeah, what's up, Mike, baby? Come tell me what you got. Acting crazy, jumping up and down. Yeah! <laughs> I tell you what. Since Mike want me to stop, tell Mike, come tell me himself. I don't believe you. Holler back at you. Have him slam the door in the face. Boom. About 20 minutes later. Do, 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 do. And uh, Craig on the door. Oh, shit, they back. Burrell. Like, yeah. He said, back, man. He said, what's up? He said, the glove one wants to meet you. Two of them big old jokers moved out the way, man. Mike was standing back in the back with a hoodie on his head, with a uh, like a cape thing on or whatever, like a, a mystery man. Uh huh. And um, he raised his head up. I could see his chin, so I knew like that nigga is white. <laughs> he said, um, he said, can you step outside, Hammer? Talk to you. He said, what the hell? He said, pull it down and let him see him. He revealed himself. Everybody was like, oh, nigga, that's Michael Jackson. Yeah. That's the first time in my life I've been starstruck. Out of all the artists I met, all the entertainers in the world, from Denzel to you name any Mike Tyson and all of that, I had never been, I never felt like that about another person. I said, that's the ultimate right there. Mm. That's Michael for real. That's that. You know, Everybody trying to see. Short. Michael Short, too. He went as tall as people thought he was. Same thing with Prince when I met Prince. How Prince, short is he? Who? Mike, and he's like five nine. Mm, not really. You sure? Prince right? four eleven. What well, was? Uh. Prince was wearing them heels, making him look tall all the time. So, <clears> so <throat> Mike, Mike sitting there. He talking to him. Hammer talking to him. He told us to go back in and close the door because we was getting, we was, we was really we getting went, rowdy. Couldn't take no pictures or nothing. We just all in the door, looking like groupies. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He said, Hammer. He said, Uh. He said, What are you doing? He said, I'm, he said, I'm up at rehearsing for my thing. He said, Mike, what's going on with you, man? He said, Nothing much. He said, I just come to, come to meet you first, finally for the first time. He said, um, he said, um, what's going on? He said, uh, I'm telling you right now, we're doing the video too, let you quit. 
He said, I'm going to tell you, James mad at you. He said, James who? He said, James Brown. He said, uh, what, is, what is he mad at me for? He said, because you, you disrespected him. He said, what? What did I do? He said, you, you acknowledge you went on some show talking about Nipsey Russell and, and Sammy Davis Jr. and all them, and you didn't say his name because your influence is, is coming up or whatever. You know, you dance just like James. Oh, no, him. I love James. Oh, my God, no. He, he's mad at me. Oh, no, I got to make that right or whatever. He said, okay, you got to make it right, but right now he's mad at you. Do you have a number? Can I call him? you have a number on him? I got I to gotta call him and tell him I'm sorry. He's like, it's okay. It's okay. He says, it's going to be right. I'll let him know. i let him know what's up. He said, what you doing tomorrow, Mike? He said, uh, I'm doing some business, but uh, what are you doing? He said, I'm having a, a video shoot tomorrow. For two little to quit. Come through, man. Come show your face. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you a cam. You know I'm going to give you a cameo. He said, <laughs> he said if I'm, I'm not busy, I'll stop through. I came. Mike came. He's still back in the corner. He didn't Mike get the came to the two legit to quit. Sitting there with his arm like video. Watching. But he and didn't he, do no cameo though. No, no, he didn't do no he didn't get on camera, do no camera. He was over there. Mike, we're doing a different move. Mike was over there like. Oh, you see like Mike, like, Mike, Mike, yeah, wanna get dancing. The, Mike wanna get something. Yeah, he was like, ooh, like he, like, yeah. And then having one of them talk to him, he's like, I love this. This is amazing. All these dancers, he's like, like a big old kid. I'm like, man, look at this. Shit, Mike man. shows up to the Too Legit to Quit video. Yes, shit. sir. He was there. He was there on my How life. How long was Mike there? Maybe about 20 minutes. He came and Will Smith came too. Will Smith came over too. Will Smith oh, really? was there too. He came too. Yep. I see your hall. Several people, man. Mm. Yeah. Damn, I had it going on, man. man. Y'all had it going on, man. Man, man. I was like, man. When, when you did you um, are you still are you still under Michael? Did, no, did, no, no. When did you get to meet Denzel? Cause I, you mentioned Denzel, but yeah. I don't. <laughs> Boy, that's it. I didn't think no more about that nigga. Um, mm -hmm. We was um, at some function or whatever, and Denzel was there. It was some some award show or something. And we was talking or whatever, and he just told him. He said, "Man, I like the work you're doing. You're doing real good, brother." He said, uh, "I'm gonna tell you something. A lot, a lot of black people don't understand is that the pinnacle of television and is, is film." Once you get on, on a movie, t a TV screen, that's the pinnacle of all things you can do mm -hmm. in Hollywood. You get no higher than that. And uh, just keep that in mind. He said, and I know you're going to be doing movies soon, brother, and all that kind of stuff, but hey, keep on dancing, Hammer. I like you, brother. You all right. He's like, okay, cool. Wow. Did Hammer do any movies? Did Hammer? Yeah. No, um, I think he did one. Yeah, yeah, but he was more of that, that man, the, the, the dance phase yeah, of Hammer. Yeah, yeah we had the a cartoon. Run. Yeah, oh, yeah. You had a cartoon? You remember the Hammer Time cartoons? Come on, I Yeah, I remember it. I remember it. I, I remember it. The Hammer Doll? I don't remember. All of that, man. All I remember yeah. is him dancing and the songs. That's all I'm I remember. I'm telling you when I know we were really in it. When they said, he said, hey, I'm going to go there, man, go to Hollywood, man. We're going to do the Adams Family. I'm going to do the whole soundtrack and everything. They talk like I told her to talk, walking a lot of water, walk, walk with them with them, walk with them. The Adam family, hey. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> we down there, man, for about two weeks on the set. You know? I like, damn, I wanna be in the movie him. Like, Sit your head down. I, I gotta <laughs> ask you I gotta ask you about uh before I before it slipped my mind. Okay. Uh your mother, you mm -hmm. said you, I remember you said on the set that she what was uh upset uh, uh but she had lost her, her job. But yeah. I also wanted to talk about just the financial. Uh, he got into a financial bind at the end. Everybody know that. Mm -hmm. He lost everything according to the way it looked. Mm -hmm. But you know, rich people. You know, when you say a, a person who rich broke, it's not the same as a broke broke nigga. Yeah. But he wasn't the same MC Hammer. Did you see the decline? Did you see when it started to to dip? Were you there or did you jump ship early? No, 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 no. Um, I remember when, I, when it changed, when it, when it all came down, when he told me that he was gonna file bankruptcy. I remember the good time, all the good time. I was there when he was getting ready to build the house, the $17 million crib with the, the, the five, 15, 16 car garage and all that on the hill in Fremont, it was nothing but land. He's like, I'm putting a, what's over here? I'm putting a pool over here. I'm doing this, but he told me this. And at that time he was building. And me and was riding one time. Because Hammer was really uh, seclusive. He didn't like to go places because when he got so famous, he couldn't go nowhere no more. Mm -hmm. He said, man, I miss being normal. I can't go to the grocery store. I can't go nowhere. He said, I get mobbed. He said, uh, what you doing, Benito? I said, I'm nothing chilling, Todd. Come hang out with me. I don't care if I had something playing with a friend or something, a girl, with I had to, hey, hey, I got to go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I went to the house. And he said, let's go, let's go riding. We just went riding, man, up in Pleasanton, California. We stopped at the KFC. Cause how many used to love chicken? You love them, them chicken hot wings? That was his favorite food. 
And Rod Williams from KFC. KFC. And we stopped there and ate, man. And we sitting there talking. I asked him the question. I said, Hammer, how's it feel to be a me, multi-millionaire, man? He said, Benito ain't never really thought about it. He said, because I, I, I work so much, I don't you know, have a time to really spend my enjoy. money, enjoy my money. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm just still stacking because I, I want to make it where, you know, at the time he had his first baby, his name was Akiba. Uh, you know, said to take care of my wife and my kids and, and, and build and have something, you know, for my family, my mother, my father, and all that, and my brothers and sisters, man, you know, keep everybody working because he employed everybody. The whole family worked for him as well as others, friends, cousins, you name it. We had, you said a while ago how many people we had. On the road, we had about 150. Yes. But Hammer at one time employed over 400 people. Wow. Man, Hammer was a good dude, mm -hmm. man. Let me tell to, you this. To, to try to keep your point, baby. I don't want to miss my point. No, because I get then it. when you say that, because the whole time when you're talking about that before, in my mind, I'm like, was that what made him get broke? Helping everybody? Yes. But see, when, he, when people say broke, he wasn't broke by our means. Right. He was broke by rich, post, rich people means. When Hammer filed bankruptcy, he still had $30 million. And that was in 1990, what? Four? Three, four. So... What's thirty million dollars? That's a lot of money, ain't it? But the most, but he filed the chapter. I don't know if it's seven or, or eleven. One of them, two. Whatever it was, he was everything was frozen for seven years. Wow. So, I knew he did all that, and he gave up the label that I was signed to. I was signed to Buster Records. B Angie B, remember her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three five seven. Three five seven. Whole Fred Ho, David Black. Wow. One cause, one effect. Dope. Um, uh, Special Generation, Soft Touch. Um, um, it was two other groups. I can't remember their names. But anyway, he had about ten groups. He let us all go. He released us to his brother Lewis. Okay. So we stayed down with Lewis for another year. Okay. So I didn't leave Fremont. I stayed in Fremont for a whole another year after Hammer released us. Hammer just had to take a break because he's like, I got to get my head together. You know, when we were signed with Capital Buster Records, Capital gave Hammer an open checkbook to do whatever. At the end. Hammer said over nine million dollars unaccounted for. Mm. Nine million. That's when he was buying them horses and the race cars and all this kind of stuff, you know, frivolous spending with necessary unnecessary. And not tracking everything. Yeah, and when tracking it and it all fell back on him. So at the end of the day he's like, damn, how'd I spend all that money? I don't remember spending all the millions. But his brother was doing it. Lewis was doing it and handling all the business. Lewis was the manager of the year one year. And wow. Forbes Forbes five hundred. Hammer's brother. For being a manager. But um yeah, wow. man, there's it a lot of loopholes, a lot of things happen that was crazy. Do you regret any like like you 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 definitely signed the first deal, the big deal that you talked about oh, coming, did it come and and when it come to your publishing and all of the stuff that lines out when a person is a writer, when a person is an entertainer, when Check a person you, you, like on. what was the what was the deal? But before I get it, because when I Google MC Hammer Network today, mm -hmm. It said he's only worth two million dollars. Mm -hmm. So it went from you said after he filed bankruptcy, that's thirty million dollars. Mm -hmm. How he went all the way down to two? I guess they don't value him like that no more. Exactly. He still got money. About three, four years ago, Hammer sold half his puzzles for fifty million dollars. Yeah, so he did the same thing Nelly just did. They're not gonna show. They're not gonna tell that. Okay, I'm telling it. Uh -oh. <laughs> but I want to talk about your publishing. Back, back and, to this. Yeah, and and your whole situation really. I was 19 years old. I signed with Hammer. When I got back to Oakland, they called me to the office, and I sit down in front of Hammer's brother, Lewis. Hammer was there, and the manager, Craig Brooks. This is what you don't know about business. I signed a Catch-22 deal. Didn't even know it. I, my deal was $350,000. Hammer said, your bonus is going to be $100,000 cash. Do whatever you want. to. But I advise you, Benito, take that money and just pinch off of it. Because, you know, you ain't going to get no more money until after your album come out, and we recoup all our... Our, uh, everything back. See, a lot, a lot of artists don't be knowing that when you get signed to major labels, everything is recoupable. I don't care if you buy some gum or many the time you went to the store and you bought that new shirt, you needed them shoes and all that. They're going to add all that shit in there and you're like, damn, man. And, and they always reserve a third of everything you make. So when you have your second album coming, you sell a million copies of your first album. When they give you the money for your second album in advance, that's the money you made at the first one. They make it seem like they give you, you know, saying, your money. Mm -hmm. Uh uh. That's, that's the money they had probably had reserve and give you that. You always stand the hole. How much money did you have in total, the most you ever had <clears> in one time dealing with MCM? About 150000 That was the most you ever had in the Yeah, plan. yeah. In line. Because the other part of the money, the other 250000 went towards producers, 
uh, songwriters and all that kind of stuff. See, I didn't know I had to learn the game. I didn't know about writing because I was a writer. And that's when the situation came up with the Aaron Hall situation later down the line. Aaron Hall, yeah, you tell, yeah, and, and we're gonna talk about that. But yeah. I wanna, I wanna just focus on the fact of when you had your deal. Mm-hmm. At the end, did you still owe Hammer money, or were you were you were you in the green? No, I, see, I, I made I made money two or three different ways. I was signed to a record deal. Then Hammer paid me for being on stage with him, and other things I did besides singing on other records. My first record I did with Hammer was with Three Five Seven. We like it wild and loose remix. That's my first song. Hammer woke me up two o'clock in the morning and said, "Get up, uh, be downstairs with me in a minute, and um, come pick you up in the hotel and take you to record." And I did. I recorded the song with them, which sold over a million copies. Mm. You know, and you know, Dewana, she stayed here in Dallas. Mm. Wow, she stayed in Fort Worth, brother. Part, so one of the members of Three Five Seven. Yeah, the one with the thick eyebrows. Yeah, her. And she still looks the same too. I wish I could get on the show. I you like can. I can make that happen. Make that happen. That's my, that's my sister. I need to holler at her. Yeah. Terrible, terrible T, the one, the one, the smetch, we were jamming. Yeah. But the one that danced too, but Terrible T, was, she was off the chain. Yeah. She stays in uh, Phoenix, Arizona now. And the third member, sweet, uh, uh, Lil P, she stays in Houston. Wow. Yeah, she don't do nothing no more. So she they never fun. came back together and just mm, do a reunion? They tried to. They, they done did a couple of reunion things for us receiving awards. You know, like in Oakland and different places in LA, but they ain't did no shows in, in years. No, wow! So you you back you, to the back to the the the, the deal today. Did I owe anything? To, yes. No. Did, did, and 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 not only did you owe anything, was there a time now when you look at go back to your catalog or anything that you dealt with? Did you have you know? Did you have rights to anything? What is is there still? Do you do those people you, that music streaming? Do you get anything now? We in the process right now, me and my attorneys. Cause a lot of people was uneducated when it came. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. I was a kid, man. That's when I started learning the business. After I found out some things were going on, I used to hang around Ham's brother, Lewis. Lewis was a mastermind. See, everybody thought Ham was the mastermind, but everything. he wasn't. It was his brother, Lewis Burrell. He did everything. He set everything up. Hammer. I mean, Lewis literally took Hammer from making three thousand dollars a night to thirty thousand dollars overnight when Hammer first started. Wow. And also, Louis Ray also signed Ricky Henderson to that big baseball deal with the A's. Yeah. And, he, and when Dion left from uh, San Francisco, Louis had some negotiating with Jerry Jones with the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. Louis Cole. Louis left home like Jesus at 13. Mm. And Louis was so intelligent, he used to get on my nerves a lot of time. Physiologically speaking, from the initial point of view, the alpharendum is very, very catalytic to the situation which is at hand. I'm like, okay. <laughs> he studied the, the, the encyclopedia. Dictionary. He learned two words every day from the encyclopedia. Not only studied them, he learned them mm. and knew the definition. Mm -hmm. And he would speak like that all the time. So when he spoke, he was highly intelligent. You'd be like, damn, what did he just say? Like, yeah. You had to look it up. So yeah, Lewis was the mastermind behind everything over there at Buster Records. And took it to the to the mountaintop and to the mountain fell. You know? Wow. So you basically still trying to figure all that out, pretty much. Yeah, like I said, right now we're in the process of receiving, uh, getting my, uh, getting my, uh, Publishing. my stream. No, well, no, streaming. I was signed to Hammer's label, Buster Record, and I was also managed by them. That's why I said a Kids Twenty Two. That's Kids Twenty Two. The label cannot manage you. You supposed to have your own management. Yeah. But he did. I was a kid. And I was so happy to be with him. I didn't give a damn what was going on. Yeah. I like whatever you ask me to do, I'm doing it. Cause I'm with you, and I traveled the world. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell y'all about the incident right quick. I ain't never been told this story and never been told. Go ahead. On the last tour we had in America, MC Hammer, Boys and Men, Jodeci, Devontae. Devontae Swing. Swing. Devontae Swing, that's my partner. We was on the road. Devontae came to my room one night and uh, him and his manager, Steve, I guess Steve last name, and he put $15,000 on the table. I said, well, what you doing? What's that? He said, man, I want you to come to Jersey with me and have me help me manage my uh my new label, Benito. Cause I see the stuff you do over here for hammer and stuff, man. So you good, bro. I said, yeah, I said, come to Jersey. What, I ain't for the right. hammer. I said, what would you tell about? What? He said, I want you to be my be my manager, man. One of my managers help me with my stuff. I'll get you an apartment and everything, man. You be good. I said, man, fifteen thousand ain't no money. And I had hundred thousand more. I was like, what you doing? Fifteen thousand? You wanna keep that little change? But uh, I said, what's going on? He said, he, he said, man, how long you been with hammer? That's when the deceitment, the devil comes in. I said, four years, why? He said, why you ain't came out with your own album yet? I said, I'm gonna come out my album, I'm gonna tell my album. How long you been telling you that? 
And then your mind starts thinking, yeah. he don't need you to sing his hooks no more, Benito. Man, he, you know, see how many he's the biggest, he can get anybody to come on, on tour to sing your parts. He can send you back there right now and do, you know, whatever you need to do, put you with Teddy. I, I can do some damn tracks for you, you know what I'm saying, all that. Bruh, it ain't about you, it's about him. I said, Devontae, I like you as my friend. I know you probably think I'm tripping. I said, but bro, check this out. If I hadn't been with Hammer, I would have never met you. So why would I betray him? I ain't no ship jumper, homie. I said, I'm a Scorpio, homie. I'm true to the game. If I love you, I'm down with you, I'm down with you to the end, to the wheels fall off. I'm not, I'm not a I'm not a betrayer, I'm not a Judas. I don't do that. I'm just saying, man, you come on over, man, help me with my groups, man. I I'll take care of you. At that time, Devontae had Missy Elliott. He had Timbaland. He had a guy by the name of Genuine. But at mm. the time, we, we knew him as, as Elgin. Mm. We didn't know him as Genuine. We knew him by biological. Elgin, quiet as a damn church house mouse. Wow. Just sitting around. And everybody else with him. He gets back. And I said, I'm glad I didn't make the decision. Because shortly after that, they got back and the tour was over. He lost everybody. Then when they, oh, they went their separate ways, remember? I remember that. Missy started doing her own thing with Timbaland. They formed a, a crew together, got their own deal. Bam! Why did he lose everybody? Was he doing bad business? Devontae, I, I would say he went crazy. He, he started tripping. He started acting like Prince or something. He started whizzing out. Yeah, he went and uh, And it just fell apart. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It wow. fell apart. And so, one of the highlight moments is when your mother, you was in there dancing, yeah. and, and, and that's probably what made you stay too, right? Almost definitely. Because you knew that he the loyalty. Was loyal, the loyalty. Yeah. It, it was overstanding the money. Yeah, it it was mean. more about just you and him having a bun. And see, it was even bigger than that, too, because we came back home south. We came to Shreveport. And especially when we came to Monroe for a concert. My mama cooked for the whole crew. Hammer paid my mama to cook. He gave her $2,000 for cooking the food. And mama, I, I gave him the money to cook. My manager, Craig, he's he from Mississippi. He said, Man, I, want some, I want this day. We had chitlins. We had Ooh. hot water, cornbread, collard greens, dressing, giblet gravy, neck bones, pig feet. Mama cooking. Man, her and her friends. She had her friends come help her. Chocolate, Hammer love German chocolate cake. They love, they, they, knew Hammer, they didn't pudding. know Hammer was in town though. Nobody yeah. didn't know. We came, man, Mama came in there and cooked for him. Cause we had, a, we had a catering service out of Chicago. Nobody wanted that. They even ate with us. Like, damn, your mom can cook. I mean, all her friends. So it was home cooked meal. For the whole crew, a lot of girls like, what is this stuff right here? It's called hot water cornbread. They're like, oh, I never had that before. They, oh, it's good. You know, it's crazy. But they wouldn't eat them chillings, though. Some of the other people on the crew, the crew members, all that, chillings? Oh, my God. Hammer said, ain't no chillings. But he loved his German chocolate cake and whatever. And it was just love, man. And he's like, man, I love your mama, man. I told her I'm going to take care of you. And I did exactly what I said I was going to do, Benito. I, I won't let you fall. So that day was on the set, two days to quit, shooting some stuff. And my phone, uh, I got a phone call from, well, the people came out and gave me a letter. Said, my, your mom said call her as soon as possible. And I thought something was wrong. So I ran in, I, I took the phone call, called my mom back, she said, baby, I lost my job today. My mom was crying. I said, mama, don't cry, it's gonna be all right. I said, what, what happened? She said, I'm just, we're just gonna be missing money, baby. You know, me and your sisters, man, it was just my mama, she had divorced my stepdad, so it was just her and my two sisters. So here I'm taking care of everybody. I like, mama, don't worry about it, I got you. I send you $600, $800 a month, whatever. I said, how much money you gonna lose, mama? She said, about $600. I said, okay, I'll, t I'll take care of that. You had it, and had some. I got it. So I came back out, and Hammer said, man, what's wrong, man, what's wrong with you? I said, I told him, my mama, he said, man, no, 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 Miss, 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 Miss Luann, no, hold on, hold on a minute. Hammer got right on the phone. He called our accountant at our bank. I named him Lynn Hamilton in Fremont, California. He said, Mr. Lynn, check this out. He said, uh, I want you to send uh, Benito Mama a thousand dollars a month. She said, "Okay, you want me to take it out the business account?" He said, "No, no, no, no. Take it out my, take it out my personal account." He said, "Henry, you sure you want to make?" Said, "Look, you heard what I said, lady. Send him, send him money. Matter of fact, call this mama, get her account number, send her a thousand dollars a month. Till I say stop it." She said, "Okay." Call my mama. Gave my mama a thousand dollars a month. Two years later, everything was over. I was gone for two years from Hammer. My mama was still getting that money. Until the, until the bankruptcy caught it and cut it off. Mm. She called me and said, baby. I said, what, mama? I said, they cut the money off today. I didn't get it today. I said, well, maybe they finally caught it, mama. Hammer did that for my mama. Wow. Out his personal account. Wow. One from the business, from his personal. Two years. That showed me he, he, that, that brother loved me, man. Mm. He loved you. Yeah, he loved me, bro. When the last time you talked to him? 
It's been about almost a year. One of our, our crew members died. And we called him, uh, his name was uh, Keith. Keith's last name, we called him T-Bag. But uh, he died He died here. He died across seas. He was over there in, in uh, Japan or somewhere, uh, China. Yeah, he got married and all that. He I thank God there. for you coming out telling all these stories. But what do you think Helmut think about you telling just what went on in the inner camp? Because a lot this story, uh, you hear it from other people that was outside the sector, but I really never heard it, me, myself, mm -hmm. from somebody that was really there and really was dealing with the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you think he feel about you talking about that? The last thing I heard was from the guy I told you we got shot in the leg named Frosty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked to him about two weeks ago. He said him and Hammond went to a funeral a couple weeks ago. So a guy they knew from the town. He said, man, he said, man, but he don't, all on TV, he tell, he tell the secrets, man, he tell the stories, man, how you feel about it? So Hammond said, he said, it's all good, man. I'm, 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 I'm all up Benito. He said, man, you tell him, stop telling the story, man. He telling too much. You know what I'm saying? He gonna mess around and say the wrong thing. He said, no, it's all good. He, he good, he good. I mean, don't trip about it. I'm all at him, and I ain't heard from him yet. But it's wow. all good. I imagine I'll be here from soon, though. Yeah, because at the end of the day, I don't think you. I think you're doing what needs to be done. Oh yeah. Because yeah. It, it, a lot of people went through a lot of things, and it's not only it's healing for you too. Yeah. Just a lot of people don't even know me, though, CEOs. Right. They don't know I'm that guy. No, but still, you know what I'm saying? For you personally, we yeah. deal with a lot of artists that are not in the limelight no more, really like mm -hmm. that. And a lot of them, because of their story and because of their pride and because of the stuff that they went through, a lot of times they get bogged down, I'm telling mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. And the, just the expression and the way that you're telling the stories and the way that you're expressing it, I think it helps, bro. Yeah. And not only you, other people who've been through that. A lot of other artists been through a lot of stuff that they haven't told, let haven't me, been, bro. Let me say this. Out of everybody that was in that crew with Hammer back in the day, it's on the three are still doing records. I'm probably number one doing the, 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 the on the so biggest scale. So. Mm -hmm. You know, not Southern Soul. I do R&B too. R &B. So mm -hmm. my last record is R&B record. Just want to love you. Big record sound like some Charlie Wilson. Mm -hmm. Me, Lamar, and a guy one cause one effect. Terrence Davis. He just released a record the other day. Southern Soul down in, in Meridian, Mississippi. He from Meridian. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Terrence. Yeah, Terrence, Terrence Snow. I mean, Terrence Davis. Terrence Davis, man. So, B. Angie B. ain't doing nothing. I, I think she's trying to do something, but it ain't, ain't nothing really came out. Um, my girls, 357, they ain't doing anything. Humphrey Ho has been dispensed for years. I mean, nobody else is doing records but us. We're the last three. Wow. The last three of the Hunt Show. And I can say this about the industry. I don't think it'll never be a label like that again. The, the Hammer did what he did for people, trying to help everybody. I gotta tell this other story right quick. You know, I know we gotta go. Oh no, we ain't gotta no, go. You, go. Okay, listen. We came off tour before we went on our last European tour. And uh it was gonna we was gonna be off for a whole month, right? A, a month break before we went across seas. Ham was so generous, he said, I can't let my people go back. He said, his brother Louis like, send everybody home. And we can come back, come back to work, we can bring everybody back and save his money. Hammer spent one million dollars on salaries for all 400 of us employees, including the crew members and everybody. He said, make sure everybody gets paid. He said, because if it had been for them, I wouldn't be me. They all work collectively to make me be the star that I am. I don't want that, I don't want them to go home. Put them all in hotels, because we had all get by apartments and all that kind of stuff going to it. He said, put them all in hotels and let them do their thing for the next month. I'm gonna pay them their checks too. They can still live like they did when we was on the road. Now, we might not give them the per diem money, but we're going to give them this. And he did that, man. Wow, that's Love huge. It was like a big family. Yeah. Man, wow. do you think there was any other group out in the early 90s like that that no. had that size of, of impact? And that everybody should tell him you're stupid. Everybody tell him, man, you crazy, man. How you got all these people out? You paying everybody? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Hammer believed in, in second chances. We had cats on our crew that was killers. We've been in prison for murder, kids, robberies, you know what I'm saying? We ain't had no pedophiles out there with us, you know, but these cats, he gave them, because society wouldn't give them a chance. And Hammer would go to their POs and tell them, I got them. Put it on me. They get in trouble, I take the penalty for them getting in trouble. But they ain't going to do it because they with me. And they would allow them to go on the road and be on tour and make a, a living for their family so they could feed their babies and their family back at home. Which they had, they hadn't. They'd have been. They'd have went back to the streets, start doing the same old stuff over. There, there, there's a scripture that say, "I was in prison and, and you did not visit mm -hmm. me." So a lot of times, 
because he's a when did he because when did he take this plunge to say I'm in the spirituality when I'm in the I'm gonna be a pastor because that one Hammer. Point, yeah Hammer was, did you see that in him early on what people don't understand is Hammer before he even became MC Hammer the dancing guy sensational Hammer was the Holy Ghost boy okay he's a he's a he's a gospel rapper hmm. he's a preacher at whatever age he was before he got the Navy and married his wife, Stephanie had been with him for like 40 years. Wow. Yeah, so he was doing that, and he changed from Holy Ghost Boy to doing, he made, he made this producer by the name of James Early. And they got together, and that's where he got that funk from. Pump it up, all them songs, uh, they put them in the mix. Uh, uh, what's the other song? Uh, man, so many songs James did. But I'm mean, interested I mean, in them bass lines, the stickler. Do, 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 do. Do 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 man, pop man. I'm gonna chill on something like you can't see it, but boy, that's the only guy I ever seen in my whole entire life. I watched dance and got chill bumps while watching him dance. I said, "What the hell is going on right here?" Man, Hammer moved so smooth, so man, he was like, he danced. It's like effortlessly, his body moved like I don't know, man. He was just cold, just cold in the game. You ain't never seen nobody that could out dance. Nobody, <laughs> not even James. He got beside James doing the, 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 the James with his legs sliding across. The, uh -huh. Shit, Hammer did it better than James. Uh -huh. All that jumping up doing. You telling me now? Nah, I around. seen James. Do you said Hammer did it better than James Brown? I love Mr. James and God bless his soul and peace. We we did a special with him on HBO, right there, Mr. James. When he, when James Brown got out of prison, Hammer was there when he got the, when we walked at the gates with a limousine. Mm -hmm. No family, no friends was there. These are stories you don't know about. Hammer gave him a briefcase. James opened it up. What's this? This is my appreciating you, Godfather. $100,000. Hammer's the reason why James got all his old publishing rights into his music. When James was locked up and gone, everybody was sampling his shit. And they've been sampling for years and never gave him no money for it. Hammer took him over to Cap and they got James together and got his stuff together and they collected all his pups and get his, get his money back to change for us. All the songs, all the rappers that have been using his samples in and paid him for it. Wow. Remember? You you're telling me MC Hammer organized it and helped James Brown to understand, you know. What he was losing, the money he was losing and they was robbing him. He said, since I'm your godson, I'm going to show you, Godfather, how to get your money. I when he got out of prison. When he, he got, got out of prison. prison. Yeah. How, how did, you know, you've heard all these stories about P. Diddy, R. Kelly, and all that. How did, how did, MC Hammer avoid all of the groupie women and the way that they cause you see what's happening with P Diddy, mm -hmm. you you see what's happening with uh, now now they say academics, academics. Uh, DJ academics like but when this money come there's women everywhere I've seen it for years how the women just stand in lines droves of them to, to, <laughs> just to, like to, you said like they were at the hotel lobbies so waiting how, to how did how did Hammer avoid the situations that these other new guys are, are, are getting pretty much cornered and, 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 you know, shook up in. When we came in, every time we came back from the shows, the bodyguards was right there escorting them to his room. Or we came through back doors or back, you know, back of the hotel or wherever it was, or, you know, trap doors, elevators, or whatever it was. He didn't really see the people like that. When he got through, he was tired. He'd go to his room, take a shower, and get in the bed and relax and get ready for the next day. Because he knew what he had to do he was always telling me, he said, man, and I'm like, P. Diddy, he said, I can't stop. He said, like an addiction. He said, and we had time. This is one of the things we had when we were on the road. Y'all gonna trip, you probably gonna trip on me by telling this too. We first tour, you need the rules and regulations of the tour. Okay, ladies, all my dancers, y'all got boyfriends? Break up with them. Mm. They're like, huh? He said, yeah, because temptation gonna be a monster out there on this road. He said, I will refer, refer y'all to just deal in-house. Right. You want a boyfriend, go, go to somebody. They one of the guys. They yeah. one of the guys in the group. And he said, because your boyfriend doesn't understand. We're on the road, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff. They don't understand that. Fellas, he said, but man, let me finish my girls though. Girls, you will not be called MC Hammer Whores. We will not have that whatsoever. No, you all will be on a curfew. If you decide to deal with somebody outside of us, let us know. We got to check them out and make sure they're cool. Because mm. I do not want a stigma saying I'm running an operation with a bunch of MC Hammer hoes running around here screwing everybody in the industry. Right. We're not going to have that. Now, fellas, women and y'all ain't going to like this. Y'all got a little more room, little, little rub room, because most of y'all are 18, 19, 20. 
you're young and some of your band members are older, got wives or whatever. Fellas, uh, we go out here. I prefer y'all mess with women 18 and above. If you had to mess with 18 year old, make sure they got ID. Really, I prefer y'all be 21 and older. But if you do, at least let the girl be 18 in, in college on their own. Do not mess with girls underage. One time warning. That's all you're going to get. If you're caught with an underage girl in your room, I'm going to fine you $500. You get caught the second time, you're gone. So he was very structured and he led by example. Just like the Army, I mean, just like the Navy. But he was married the whole time he was yes. doing this. The whole time, yeah. Yeah. He said, so if you're going to do something, have some in house girlfriends or whatever, brother. Y'all can do what y'all want to do. Me and Carefrew, curfew, y'all be in their rooms by 11 o'clock. No later than 11. Be in your rooms. Don't be hanging out because things happen at the certain hours. Did his wife come on tour with him? Sometimes she did. Okay. Not much. She didn't really like it. But he was, like he was disciplined even when she wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody was. Everybody was on point. You know, the, you know, it's, it come Mama, Mama Burrell. Everybody did, did anybody, anybody get kicked off of tour? For doing that? For, no. For, for messing up, you know, in a way where the, the, the guy caught up with the women? Or he just had one incident and then and became, he became my roommate when he got out of prison. One of our, one of our people went to prison. Ace from the group Ace Juice. Yeah. Uh, he messed with a girl down in Florida and <clears throat> she did it consensually but she came back and said because her daddy forced her. He raped me. So he had to go back go to Florida go to court. Mm. They put him just going for a hearing. They kept him. Wow. Gave him three years in prison. Wow. He did three years in Florida for rape. But she which lied. He, yeah, which he didn't do. Yeah, I believe Ace because he's my roommate. He said, man, I didn't do it, man. He said, man, there, there was prisoners down there. You know, I said, they didn't. They, they, was I, a white I girl? He was a white girl. Mm. I said, why are you missing white girl? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was That's the first thing we go see. Mm -hmm. No, nah, because look, my grandpa told me, he said, boy, you won't be hanging from no tree. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It is still the South. They'll still get you. But now you can't beat them. You, boy, you see so many mixed kids in the stores and stuff. Man, grandma, stone, grandma. Them, yeah, them is little mixed kids. She got, what the? Oh, they hit them messed up the bloodline. Man. Look at them. <laughs> they is 38 hot. I got to ask you about this song here. Come on with it. We used to talk. You didn't write that, man. Come on, stop playing. You uh, Now, Aaron Hall is the guy that, you know, that I Miss You song. It's a dope song. Uh, I sing it a lot, you know what I mean? I think about people that passed on a lot of time when I, when I sing it. Mm -hmm. um, you you wrote that? Me, my friend Ephraim Galloway, and Derek Hall. No relation to Aaron Hall whatsoever. This what happened. The record was for my album. When Aaron came around, Lewis started managing outside groups. He managed Brownstone, Heavy D, We Still Alive, um, uh, Dougie Fresh, Ralph Tresvant, a couple others. So Aaron was one of them. Lewis was playing my music. He said, I got a guy that sound like you, Aaron. He's like, oh, yeah? He's like, yeah. He said, let me hear it. Play my music. He played I Miss You. He heard it. I want that. Me, but now nah, I didn't know this. So me being signed to Busted, and they own my publishing, everything I did, I didn't know. They sold a song to Aaron Hall. Without your content. Without my content, yeah. Because they own my publishing. I had no control. Mm. Louis Silas bought the record that ran MCA. Aaron did the song, but he changed the verses. What, to did, try to he, what, did, he, what did he change? He changed the verses. Both the verses are changed. It's not the original verses. What Just was the that? tempo and the and he the, kept hook. the melody and the tempo and the hook. Yeah, he kept it all the same, but he changed the verses on it. So what was the verse before he changed it? Can you sing a little bit? Do you remember what it is? Of course. Okay. When you tell write me. songs, you remember everything. Okay, tell me, sing sing how my verse. Right. The Aaron verse. So there you are standing in the doorway with your finest lingerie on. Thought it was an image, but now you're gone. Sleeping in my bed. I lay here tossing, turning. How thoughts of you run through my head. How I wish that you were here But now it's a dream and a wish You would come back to make us true But you're long gone away And I'm missing you I miss you Talking to Jamaica Feel me? That's the way it went That's Okay, it went. and now seeing how, how Yeah, how We used to talk 
laugh all night, girl. Right. What happened to those days? Did they all just fade away? Holding you in my arms. Made me feel so happy, but now you said you have to go. What's wrong? I need to know. Now it's a dream, and I wish you would come back to. Come on, babe. Gosh, dog. Second verse. Wherever I go, you stay on my mind, girl. You're an angel to me. You're the woman every girl wants to be. There'll be some good times, and there will be some bad times. Every time I fall, you would catch me. You're the woman just for me. But now it's a dream, and I wish you would come back to make us true. But your love go away. And I'm missing you. How did his second verse go? You don't remember, do you? You say you'll be with me forever. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> but I guess the one that took my place. Took the place. I'm in loving you. Making love to you all through the night. I wish you were still here. So I can see your pretty face again. Baby, come back and rescue me from all this pain and misery. But that's a dream. That show exactly the way it go. That was it. Wow. They done took your damn Get my soul. damn residuals, nigga. They done wow. took your damn Get my damn I did the original wow. right. wow. See, this damn is a story song. that never was told. The nigga. Uh, Nas, Nas been told. Aaron, Aaron, come uh. on. And did you ever speak to Aaron about this song? Then he told me to my face. He said, you got a piece of impediment. But need to tell you something. You should handle your business. I said, what, nigga? He said, you didn't have your business, man. You can't blame me. It ain't my fault. Man, I love Aaron Hall, man. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. They, 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 they sold me the record. I said, well, I'll be damned. I was at home in Monroe. I mean, back home in El Dorado. When you heard it. And the radio is playing on the radio station. It's for Christmas. We're on for Christmas holiday break. <clears throat> Come on the radio. I'm like, wait a minute. That's my song. But that ain't me singing. That's who the hell sing? Damn, it sound like it. But that sound like Aaron. Is that Aaron? Hold the hell on. You start trying to figure that out. Hammer. Hey, hey, what's up, but you know, happy holidays. It's Hammer. I said, man, I'm, I'm, I'm in, in, my, in the home. I'm in the radio station in Monroe, Louisiana, man. They playing my song, I Miss You. What's going on? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot to tell you, man. We, we, we saw the record at Aaron Hall. I'm like, y'all did what? Y'all saw my y'all saw my record? What? And that was a I'm hit I'm like, damn, song. Hammer, what's up, man? man? What's up? He said, hey, hey, video, 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 video. Don't worry about it, baby. When you get back, I got something for you, man. Don't worry. You wrote that record, man. You can write some more. Don't you trip. I like, that was a big song. That right. was a huge song. It was it was a push. It was a push that was on. He had everything was set up and the video set up the record. It killed it, it killed it with the baby being born and she dying. Yeah, yeah. It was, mm -hmm. At that time it was a very sentimental time in life where it was very emotional. Should you show that now? People are like, oh, yeah, she uh, Man, you know, that thing was yeah. hard. It was what major. Is, I'm going to tell you, wait, wait, let me you, say this. What inspired this. you to write that? I mean, I write a lot of crazy songs, you know? It's just that we was all, it's a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And on my first solo album, Derek Hall and Ephraim helped me with that album. And we did, they did like five songs on that album I did. It's called Benito, Show Me Some Love. And they did. We worked on that. I got a record on that. Sound Like I Miss You Too. It's called uh, Silently Saying Bye Bye. You know, on that song, on that album, Shout out to Aaron Hall. I'm a mm. big fan. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's my guy that's too. Uh, when it, uh, we straight. That one when you, I know y'all straight. When you need me, oh, when you need me. When you need me. That's a I'll bad song, right there. man. When you need me, I'll be there. That's it. Whenever you call me. That's that, I'm telling you. That's we the was, baddest we song. We were so. Can I tell you another incident? Go, Go ahead. ahead. <laughs> I'm with Hammer. I'm with Hammer. Concert come up, they in Redwood City, out there in the Oakland area. Guy coming to town. I gotta go see Teddy. Yeah, yeah. I ain't seen Teddy since Teddy told Hammer he better sign me. We get up there, my girl Big Liz from, um, you know, Dance with Keith Sweat and all them. They see me, what do you know we do? We there with me, Dougie Fresh, Heavy D, and Hammer's cousin. So I'm just singing all the songs and everything, do what they were doing, and they got to, uh, Let's chill. And uh, it's a bad boy. Yeah. And uh, Aaron walked across. Teddy told me, he said, "Hey, 
He looked at me, saw me, he said, and, uh, and uh, he told me, go around this way, go around the stage, come around the side. So I went to the side of the stage, and uh, the, uh, he passed me the mic. Aaron had his back turned, and um, the record started, right? Playing the music, the, the instrumental, whatever. I said, uh, I said, I said, last year, ho, 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 those, those breaks, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Aaron, he looked around like, something wrong, the, the, the dad done messed up or something. Something right. <laughs> I said, from the first time I saw your face, girl, I knew I had to have you. That nigga turned around and said, what the, f he said, I wanted to grab you with my warm embrace, visions of your lovely face. Crowd, <sighs> oh my. Aaron just stood up like this with the mic, looking at me like, who the hell is this nigga right mm -hmm. here? Singing my song like me. And I got to the point, oh, let's see Aaron said, come on, baby. He started to going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> what wow. city was y'all He can take it up. Redwood City, Ooh, California. He can take it no more. That's that competitive spirit. Yeah, he like, man, you ain't gonna show me up on that right there, son. Exactly. But see, at the time, Aaron, see, my voice still the same way, strong. Mm -hmm. Aaron voice and changed over. He had that surgery and everything on his throat. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So you don't sound nowhere in the same. Man, you gotta understand, during that time, man, a lot of people say that R. Kelly stole Aaron Hall's style. Can I tell you this story? Yeah, Go a ahead. lot of people say that, you know. Hammer had a chance to sign Naughty by Nature. Mm. Had a chance to sign Brownstone. Had a chance to sign Vanilla, uh, Vanilla Ice. Really? Yeah. And a couple others. Mm -hmm. But I remember distinctly in Chicago, Robert Kelly came to the room. Mm. And Hammer said, I like your music and everything, man, though, but I already got a dude sound like Aaron Hall. That's him right there. His name is Benito. Benito. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Robert Kelly. Wow. A year and a half later. Vibe. 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 I said, him. Public announcement. Remember that dude that came in the room that day? He messed up. And you up. decided, I said, that's him, man. He got the hottest record. On yeah. Him the big bunch of, damn, he is blowing up here. What's his name again? I said, Robert, Robert Kelly. Kelly. But he go by R. Kelly in the public announcement. He said, damn, he blowing up. He could have had that. Had a chance to sign him, didn't sign him. Wow. He didn't sign on Kelly. Uh, Kelly came with his manager and everything, did audition and all. Didn't Humbly sign him. came in, wanted to be with him. Hammer had a, a chance to sign a lot of artists. He wouldn't sign him. But R. Kelly. Because he already had enough of us. You know, he didn't want to. Was that his biggest, did he regret not signing him? Oh, yeah, he thought about that a lot. Was that he his biggest? He thought about Naughty by Nature, too. He said, damn, I could have had He could have had Naughty by Nature. Yeah. people came and, you know, yeah. did presentation and everything, and they wound up signing with somebody else. Those wow. were his biggest regrets. Let me say this, too. I got to say this about this one. I remember we was in Baltimore, Maryland, backstage. The Jodeci, MC Hammer, and uh, Boys Men Tour. Puffy comes in. Hmm. P. Diddy. P. Diddy. Puffy, P. Diddy, Party Diddy, whatever. Yeah. He talking to Lewis about they pay. They on tour with us. 15000 ain't enough. We need some more money. My boy's blowing up. Lewis said, nigga, the reason why they blowing up because they on tour with me my bro but my brother. He, he putting them in places they never could have been by themselves. Yo, label ain't pushing them there. Y'all independent anyway. Y'all Uptown Records. You sign the MCA. It's a mother company. But ain't nobody doing like that. Well, if we can't get no more money, we're going to pull them, pull them on. He said, hell, pull them off. I'll replace them tomorrow. Mm. So who the hell you think you're talking to, young boy? So you go back to uh, New York and talk to Andre and Rail, man. Why are you in there trying to negotiate for him? Tell Andre to come holler at me. You talking to, you, you, I don't need to be talking to you about nothing. So he charged Puff Daddy up that day. He told Puff, if you don't get up out of we'll whoop your ass. Wow. Puff was mad. And then Devontae was like, hey, man, chill out, bro. We like this tour. Let us finish it out, man. Don't mess it up. Come on, Puff, man. Fuck that. Y'all need, need more money. This nigga ain't paying you. They're making all this money off y'all. They ain't paying your money. 15000 is enough. Y'all should be getting twenty twenty five. Boys and men getting twenty. And then Louis like, how the hell you know how much money I'm getting towards the men? You know what we paying them. Mm -hmm. We got to deal with Mike. You know what I'm saying? Our deal is our deal. It's, it's confidential. You don't know what I'm getting paying them. Wow. They, man, just using y'all. We put you on our tour. We didn't need y'all. You know how people want to be on tour with us? Mm -hmm. They want to get out there on the road with us? 
Mm -hmm, Cause y'all was the hottest thing out. Wow. Did you ever get to meet like Jay Z? No. Or Fifty or any of them? Biggie, you did. Yeah. Yep. Tell me about that. Biggie Big, or Tupac? Two times. I met Biggie two different set, uh, situations. One, he was at Summer Jam in uh in uh Van, Van Nuys, not Van Nuys. What's it called? Not Pasadena. Um, out there where Disney World is mm -hmm. in L.A. And it was a summer jam. And this after I, le I left him and then I was a solo artist. Tyrese before he just did the Coca-Cola commercial. Yeah, that's hard, man. My boy Ricky that died. Well, Ricky Harris. Mm. Ricky was the host that day. And I got up. <laughs> and this was crazy. Here I go again. Aaron Hall. All my people sitting out there. We was out there chilling. So we backstage. So in between breaks, you know, band stuff. They're like, you know. Y'all gonna sing the songs. Tyrese got up there and sung Forever My Lady. There's another bad boy, I don't know what he's doing now. His name was uh, DJ Rogers. You ever heard of him before? No, what song you sang? He used to sing with uh, Death Row. He said it's a doggy style. He had yeah. a doggy style song. Anyway, he sung, he was, he was kind of popping in LA at the time. Mm -hmm. I went last. What'd you hit him with? I said, I said Rick came from the old school. He said, okay, do your thing, man. Y'all ready? It's about, 20,000 up there. My cousin said, fuck it up, cuz. Even though I hate to leave, girl, for I cried as I walked out that door. Cry, Tim. Cry. Temptation <laughs> is asking me to stay, but we've been through the same thing before. Oh, I, I, I. I can't believe that this is happening to us. We made vows to never depart. Never. No. I turned my head to see if you're hurt, cause I also feel it deep in my heart, baby. You said you'd never leave me. I left it at that. I said, boy, I'm talking about <laughs> boy. The crowd. Boy. The crowd. Killed him. Mm. Tyree's like, motherfucker. Took his, took his moment. <laughs> so you, you, you really I got him. I back. Puffy like, yo, man, you did good, bro. So I appreciate it, Puff. Biggie, yo, big man. You represent for the big man, man. Thank you, bro. That's what's up, big homie. Where you from, man? So I'm from Arkansas. He's in Arkansas. Ain't never been to Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. I said, hold it down, Brooklyn. He's like, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> That's hard, man. That's, man. That's a big impression to leave on Biggie, man. man. It was lovely. And the next time I saw Biggie, this was one year before he got killed. Wow. Mm -hmm. We was in Vegas together at the uh, Tyson fight. I'm going to tell you this too. I stopped liking Michael Jordan. What happened? We, we, we was sitting over there in the casino and Biggie was just sitting on the stage chilling. We were sitting there talking, whatever, hanging out. And um, Michael Jordan came in. So everybody started crying. You know, everybody, damn, who, what the, who the hell is that? What's going on? And that's Michael Jordan. I said, oh shit. MJ? Let me go give me an autograph. You know what I'm saying? This nigga, man, all of the white kids, he signed their autographs, the little black kids, and went sign them, and none of us. When he came to us, asked him to give him a picture, anything, that nigga took off, walked off, man, with his people, and went through the hotel. Uh-uh. Was this before? That, that was the same question I'm thinking was, about. Was this before or after, after his, his dad, dad got passed. killed by them it black people? It was after Tyson fight. Yeah. Okay. So that means he was, I was he, like, this he had a person in front of him. He was an asshole. He said, man, I don't even like Michael Jordan no damn more. Damn. Cause you I heard a lot of bad a, stories about Mike, man. Yeah. Mike but Jordan. we heard that's the reason why he don't like us because of what happened to his dad. Yeah, whatever. So <laughs> can you really can you blame him? Them two retarded boys and kill his daddy. You don't think so? Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you heard anything else about him ever since that happened? Mm -mm. Okay, they both were special. The two special boys ain't gonna. Just, how the hell did driving around his daddy Alexis? Oh. How? Mm. How's that possible? How's it physically possible? Yeah. They both were special. A white boy and a black boy. They were best friends. And they all uh, mysteriously killed this man. And, and, and yeah. Mm. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> man, I just want to tell you thank you for coming on the show. You, uh, I know he got a whole much, oh, much more stories. Yeah, I'm, like, last, I'm like, this ain't the dang, last well, how many more stories you got? I just said and let him talk because it, so, it was a lifestyle. You, you know never asked me, but he told what's the what's the most beautiful place you ever been in the world? You was a hammer and y'all went around the world with her. Where did y'all go? What is Barbados? You love Barbados. The Caribbean. Barbados. That's all I'm gonna say. Trinidad, Why? Tobago. Why? It is beautiful down there, the island. 
the sands are white clear like so it's better than Jamaica have you been yes. to Jamaica Barbados yeah we went to, we went to Kingston no you my wife no, no, Kingston, you didn't go you to didn't go to like Ocho Rios Negril all no, of that we went up and on in the hills and the red the red dirt clay dirt See, around, no. the huts and saw the people sleeping on the ground it's raining tin on the top yeah, of the yeah no they, you, you needed to go we you didn't go to the right place. You need to go to the right place. Negril. You can go to Negril. You can go to Ochi. You can go to Montego Bay. That's a tourist. No, no disrespect, though. <laughs> when we did uh, Jamaica, our girls got sick. They was throwing up. It was, Why? Because the people stink. Wow. No, they did not. They were so musty. It was, the wind was blowing. The air, you smell that, that, that stench. And See, you girls, said we smell. Our girls started. Oh, I you, didn't say you you're not from here. Too. You from America. You smell yeah. too sweet. <laughs> you yeah, have a sense. Smell. Americans we have a sense. Cologne. They don't. They don't use deodorant. All that. Oh, no. What? Don't. No. No. Don't oh, do that. Oh, oh, now she really gonna wear deodorant. I was in '92. We I was there in '92. They wear deodorant. I was born in '79. I've been wearing oh, deodorant. Oh, oh. I met a girl over there named with Daisy. Never forget her. <laughs> Daisy, Daisy had bug weed and everything. I had, to, I had to shave on her arms and her. Uh, ooh. As our old folks say, her front burn I too. I don't know what kind of girls you was meeting. Hey. And where you went? We went to the strip club. They was on top of our head, dancing up top. Up there. They, they danced some thing up there. Like We walked in there, man. They like they saw a ghost. They stopped. The music stopped. You know, like a honky-tonk. It's a shirt. <laughs> it looked at us like, who the hell is these people? No, no, no bones had that damn hair all up and yeah. stuff. Right? And then, okay, good out. The, the taxis, not the taxis, but the trucks with the, all the speakers on them. Mm -hmm, we ride mm -hmm. inside the truck. I said, well, I like this. Mm -hmm. This is different. But, uh, yeah, we saw the bad side of the island, too. Yeah, yeah. you yeah, have yeah, a bad side, side, but you didn't see the good side, apparently. Yeah, we did. But no. The ambassador was with us. We saw everything. Mm-mm. Yes. But the, the island true. was a trip, look, though. Look, but look, I had a good time over there, and we, I seen some women. We was over there during the festival time. You got to realize, so we I there for the festival. hey, listen, my wife took me. I seen I Chinese, Jamaican. I've seen a beautiful, yeah. uh, uh, the resorts. Uh, it's and places over there. And they all deodorant. <laughs> Her friends is all dope. Musty. Smell like Why the uh, hell you was at? I like know. Onion patch. I was like, what the hell? You went up in the hills and seen them. Mm, they were down low. In the, in the, in the city? In yeah, the city part we was. Uh -uh. We, we pulled up to our hotel. It was a dude. <laughs> it was crazy. Dude was in, in, in the water fountain. Butt ass nigga taking a bath. Playing in the water. The people jumped on the bus and, and other military people, whatever. They were not just start beating him. Stuff hammer made to stop. Hey, no, no. No, man, don't beat him, man. Let him go, man. Don't, don't beat him like that, Probably man. a crazy guy. But still, mad he, man. He was butt naked. He was mm -hmm. swinging. All oh, girl like, oh, he had that thing. <laughs> like, yeah, he had that tool on him. Yeah, that tool. Like, oh my, they like this in Jamaica. <laughs> like, yeah, they like it was. It was a trip, man. It was love. Man. Then what, what y'all got? What is it? Pesos or whatever the money? No, just um, yeah. Jamaican Gilders? dollars. Just Jamaican, Jamaican dollars. dollars. It was one of them. They don't have a name for it. We I, back then, our money was like twelve yard dollars. Yeah. yeah, whatever. It's it now it's 150 now. to one. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy, man. We was like, man, it's a it's a different world, man. But it dope dope place. When I go over there, I ain't gonna lie, I don't be wanting to come. I back. had the the fresh uh, coconuts, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that. It was like, mm, it's just too fresh. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, it's good for you. Then we didn't know nothing about no damn sea moss back then and all mm -hmm. that. It was good for us. It, it was it was great, we great experience. Out. But Barbados, man, all the dudes, the people that there, most of them were Geechee. You know what I'm saying? They had them funny eyes. They talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell did they just say? It's Geechee. You don't know it's African. Mm. So they was there. But most of them, I seen a dude black as your outfit with blue eyes, like that water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you see. Gray eyes, green. Like, man, what the hell? Look scary. It reminded me of that old movie, Serpent in the Rainbow. Yeah. Like, I'm going to blow some dust on me. Tell me Voodoo, whatever. Oh, ain't no voodoo gonna be able to handle y'all, man. Shit. You got to die. <laughs> Check He's it, man. He's from Louisiana, so he yeah. know. Yeah, 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 we yeah. went to Puerto Rico. I said, what the hell? Are we? Wait a minute. Beautiful. These women look like us. They got yams for yams. They all had red hair. Their hair like natural red. I'm like, damn, it's just a little island up close. Jamaica right down there. We, we, damn, Puerto Rico. All right now. <laughs> man, thank you for coming on the show, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Uh, follow me, man, on social media, man. Uh, Benito Glosson is my real name, government name. I ain't have nobody. No one, man. Uh, but I have an artist page named Benito. 
They can follow me there. Follow me on TikTok, Benito Glosson. Follow me on Instagram, Benito Glosson. B-E-N-I-T-O-G-L-O-S-S-O-N. But I must say this most of everything. Please go watch my new documentary that's out right now on Amazon Prime and Tubi because, you know, most black folks like right to Tubi free. Go on Tubi. It's called Benito Behind the Hammer. Please go watch my documentary. You'll see a lot of other stories and information that we talked about like we did tonight on the show. And I'm telling you, man, it, it, it's, it's glorious. It's, you don't like it. I want to just say, man, just uh, give me one of those R and B songs that if you was gonna move the crowd, you would sing that you, you the new stuff that you got. The new stuff, mm-hmm. yeah, my new record, yeah, new record. It's called. It's, it's for all the ladies. The ladies, you are watching. This is for all the ladies in the house now. Y'all ready? Okay, here we go. It's called "Just Wanna Love You," baby. I wanna know the things that make you really, really happy. I want to know, can I always keep a smile up on your face? I want to know, would you love me through the summer, spring, winter, and fall? I realize your worth to me, that says it all. There is something special about you, I can't hide it. I'm crazy about you, baby. I'm ready for this commitment to spend the rest of my life with you, darling. Through thick and thin, you're the one that kept me grounded, and for that I thank you. Your love has conquered me Now I know what to do I just want to love you I want to love you forever Baby, for a lifetime Man There's no doubt in my mind Baby, it's the right time You know what, baby? There's no other woman in this world That makes me feel the way you do uh, these words I say to you are very true. I just want to love you. Man. I like that. Yeah, Benito in the building. That's what you need to play for me every day, okay? Play, oh, really? play that song. Oh, really? I like I the words. You. It's on I got YouTube. You. I like it's the words. I got you. 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 Let's get Practice it. Practice that song so you All can right. sing oh, it you to me. Oh, you want me to sing I it? I want you to I sing that to me. I put that Benito in and let Aaron Hall come behind him. And that's how I get down. <laughs> Man, man, I appreciate you, yeah. man. I really do, man. Appreciate and I say, man, here, keep man. doing good music, man. Yes. Keep pushing it for the culture because people need to hear good music, yeah. good R and B feel music. Uh, either even Southern Soul, like whatever they oh, want to yeah. call it, to dress it up. Yeah. Go with it, man, because we need that voice, man. We yeah. really do, man. And thank you so much. When I came over to Southern Soul, a lot of the uh, other artists that been there said, man, we, we gotta have to have you over here. And, you know, you gonna put the put the pressure on the other cast, you know, to get together because it's like, you know, it just brings a, a fresher, you know. Fresh air, new energy, you know, a veteran like myself. I wasn't really tripping. My daughter, the one got me to Southern Soul. Mm, you know, wow. my, my daughter stays in New Orleans. Yeah. So she's like, Daddy, it's a dude I came. Poker Bear. Got a song yeah. called Side He's been over here. That's my yeah. <laughs> Poker, that's my, that's my guy too. Now, let understand this, y'all. Poker is Poker Bear. Mm-hmm. But I am the Teddy Bear. Man. Mm-hmm. Big Benito. Up. I'm Benito, the Teddy Bear. Or either you can call me Zaddy, baby. <laughs> man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Hey, man, make sure you guys check out Benito's clips, man. He told some stories that you got to see this next clip, man. Check it, man. Boss Talk 101, what a boss is talking.